we're just we ba we're basically compiling all that we learned from different different lectures. You know, from uh, and credit goes to many many people. Sheikh Daoud, um, his wife, sister Tasneem. There's Omar Suleiman. There is, um, you know, Yasser Qadi, Mufti Mink. So yes, many duas yes, from yes, there. Yes, yes. You know, like um, endless scholars. Like we can't even remember how many people we watched and uh, how many like because and it's not from one lecture. It's from multiple you, lectures yeah. and some of and them from Instagram the reels yeah. of the Quran. And some of them are we get the ban benefit from uh, how we we used to carry like a little halqa for our kids, uh, the Islamic story time. So we get benefit from theirs dua too. Yeah, it's because we, we would see the pro duas of the Prophet while we would be teaching our kids and we're like, oh, yeah, okay, you know, okay. there's this dua. Let's make this dua, you know. So uh, that's how we added these things. And through our discussions, we realized that sometimes when we make dua, our duas are not organized. It's... And sometimes we're not asking for exactly what we want, you know, and I'll give you a very small example. We were talking about our kids getting married. They're very small. Yeah. Our daughters are like, what, nine and ten? Yeah. They're very small. And we were talking about how our moms made dua. And our moms dua was, was, you know, bless our daughters with good husbands. Well, what's good? What does good mean? So we decided, no, we're going to write every tiny thing. Bless our daughter with a husband who knows how to make her smile. Bless our daughter with a husband who can tolerate her anger. Bless our daughter with a husband who's financially strong, never asks for her for her dependence. Bless our daughter with like every tiny thing. And so why, you know, vice versa for the sons too. Yeah. Um, because that was like one of the famous hadith, which um, like descriptions and the summary says like the Hazrat Aisha Radhiya Ta'ala and I said one time, like uh, if you need to ask like the laces, to tie the shoelaces, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Make a dua. Make so a dua. think about the only that part, like a shoelaces tie. And it's it's once we are thinking like, we, we think like, uh, it's just a very tiny matter. How can we ask this to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? No, because the day of Arfa and the Hajj is the whole journey about the struggle and dua. That's it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want you to be hike in the mountain. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want you to be finish the whole Quran in one day or two day or a five day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see your struggle, your desperateness, and you will totally out of your comfort zone. Let me share one quick thing, someone here. Mm -hmm. Because we once we did the last year, the Hajj, you know what, every year when the Hajjaj goes for the Hajj, they have to pay, face the difficulties of Hajj before the Hajj. And that all difficulties are the training of the day of Arafa. Mm -hmm. Because if you are not going through with these uh, struggles and difficulties, it won't be like the Hajj is not like a very, very meaningful for you. Because what will happen? Why you are smiling? <laughs> <laughs> because when we came out of Hajj, at first, I was making dua that Ya Allah, please take me, give me a chance to come to Hajj again with my um with my kids. And then when we got when we did Hajj, I'm like, oopsie daisies, you know. Now I made the dua. Do I want to <laughs> yeah. go through that again? You know what? <laughs> Every year, no matter like your grandfather goes for a Hajj, your father goes for a Hajj. Hajj is a struggle. Hajj is not like uh like a Umrah. Umrah is like another pleasure journey, like a pleasant journey, but Hajj is like a struggle, but a struggle doesn't mean like you make make you um, feel like hard and don't go for a Hajj again. Uh, even though the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said like one time that uh, one woman asked the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu like, should I go for a Hajj every year? So he said, if I said yes, then the, my Ummah going to be think like it's obligatory on them. Mm -hmm. They will do a Hajj every year, but at least do once in a lifetime. But if you are able, capable to do a Hajj, multiple Hajj or multiple Umrah, then go ahead. Like, because you know what, every Hajj and once you are going for the Hajj, that is like a very, very important mentally prepare for each and everything, not for the struggle, mentally prepare for the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter what, like how much pain mother feel once we, she is in a labor, once she, once the kids in their hand, they will totally forget about that pain. Hajj is like this. Once you are come back, you will totally forget about all the struggling parts. You only remember the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the khushur of your ibadah. And um, suddenly, you know what? After the Hajj, what will happen? Suddenly you start missing the Makkah. There's mm -hmm. the days come once you feel like the why I am in this, this area of the this area of the world, why I'm not there. Let me tell you one quick story of ours. Once we came back, we are so tired when we are in the Medina. We are like very, very tired. The days of the Medinas are very, very tired. We are only for three days in the Medina. 
And we try to be focused on the ibadah and each and everything to get it in these three days. Once I came back to the home, the first night I was sleeping, I'll, I wake up around three uh, in the middle of the night and I look at the clock and I run to the towards my washroom. And once I was in my wash, standing in my washroom and I feel like it's over, it's done. And I was like, um, in my brain, I was keep thinking like I am in uh, Masjid Nabi and I'm getting late for Tahajjud. And that me make me feel like really crying. Like it's done. It's looked like a dream. It's only dream for 20 days. But you, the pleasure of that ibadah and the hajj and the duas, it will last forever. That's why the uh, you guys are very lucky also. Alhamdulillah, you guys are performing the hajj in such a young age. And it's very really good because the impact of the hajj in the young age lasts for a long time. Because in, in the old age, what will happen? You will start you are um, sleep, you have this, so many sleepless nights. So you have to wake up for the tahajjud because you cannot sleep without the sleeping pill. So what will happen once you did the hajj in the young life that that make the impact on your on your spiritual uh, spiritualness and the emotions towards the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you are more conscious about what you are doing or what you are not doing. Because inshallah, once you all come back from the Hajj, think about this. Now, once first time you born to your mother, like that was the time once you are so, so many years passed by, you are infant, you don't have the knowledge, this and that. Now you are come back with your own consciousness and you know each and everything, what is right, what is wrong. So you have to be control yourself and and you have to be mingle into this world and it would be really hard to think make the things on a uh, right path so may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept whatever you guys are doing and accept your duas so make sure like the dua your dua is the main key the hat essential and everything can be done but the dua cannot be done on your behalf someone's going to ask the duas your duas are your private property and you have so many things to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is your day. Do not waste a single minute of arfa not to making a dua or for doing the chit chat and sleeping over there and wasting your time. So um, arfa, yes, it the to fulfill for the fulfillment for hajj is after Zohar, you start doing your ibadah, okay? But here's the thing. Um, many people go to sleep before before so hard. Sure, it really depends on how you feel, how your body feels. We're all at a different stage in life in terms of our health. Um, if you feel you do need to take a nap, go ahead. You don't want to get sick either. But um, so what we did was that we just uh, we went to Arafat in uh, in the morning, right? Yeah, after after Fajr, the Fajr. After Fajr, they line you up. It takes a while. The bus, everything takes a while. We get there. Um, we were hungry, so we had a bit of food, and it, it's lined up with food. Okay, the camps are very comfortable. Honestly, Hajj doesn't feel like the Hajj it used to be a long time ago because now they have tents with air conditioning. Someone, I mean, because like once I was, uh, let me sorry, mm -hmm. I was just cutting it off. So um, when I was like uh, compiling this these slides, I was trying to figure out that pictures which kind of uh, the camps of ours. So I go all over the Google. I didn't find a single picture of the luxurious camp look like ours. That is something like meant to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gifted us. Mm -hmm. That is not the normal time of the Arafa because last year what happened like the um, uh, Hajj ministry compensate the Mutatif group on the last minute and in a one night we don't know like what's going to be happen the next day of the Arafat because we are thinking about all the struggling and trouble between the Mutafif and us. So we are prepared for the worst on the day of Arafat. Yeah, Arafat is a tough day. Okay. The, for, many, tough for many, many reasons. Uh, also because we went when the, the crowd was smaller. You guys yeah. are going now when the crowd is back to regular. Yeah. Okay. So it is a tough day. So here's the thing. So we, we started off just doing extra nafil, uh, you would say. Uh, no, no, let me let me finish one thing. Mm. So that day, once we uh, our bus stop in the Arafat, so we were asking each another, like, is it the land of Arafa? It is. It, is it the right place where bus stop? Because it's it's look mm. like a like a very beautiful resort. I cannot explain you in my words. Yeah, what fountain, last thing we asked and, Allah Subhanahu yeah. Taala and what we found it. I was thinking like if I do the Hajj thousand time, I don't know. I am capable to get all these blessings of Allah Subhanahu Taala. It was so comfortable day, and that was the the dua. Me and someone like as I I know my group, we have been asking that dua from the day one from the Makkah till the uh, eight Zilhaj, and now we are 
on the day of Arafa. So Arafa was the most blessed day from all the days of Hajj, no doubt. But the once we are landed in that resort, the resort. I, yeah, it looks like a resort. The flowers, the uh, rose petals are in the ponds and like the fountain, the fountains. It the was mist. really hot. Yes. And they had fountains and everywhere. the chillers and cooler. The Every coolers, the AC. Okay. So Arafat is supposed to be really, really tough. Yeah. And okay. Really, really tough. It's not because they make it tough. It's heat and tent. it is. And they are, how much can a, a country provide you in terms of to compensate with the heat and your tiredness? They can't. And in so many people, it becomes really hard. But we kept luckily, on, and we were afraid even before going to Hajj, are, are, are we going to be able to stand the heat? Are, are we going to get space in tents? We didn't know there was going to be air conditioning yeah. in the tents. Are, and we kept on making go, Ya Allah, just make it easy for me. Ya Allah, let us not, let us not feel that heat on us. Just make it easy so that we can make dua because the heat really hurts at that time, right? Yes. Um, and you can stay in your tent and you can go outside. But here's the thing, when you're in your tent, you start falling asleep. Yes. So many people step outside. So we tried our best and when we went and Asya said, okay, listen, if you want to go to sleep, you do your thing. I'm going to do my thing. I was like, don't worry. Yes, we'll do my, I'll do my thing. And so I'll tell you one thing and you're going to hear in all the lectures. Arafat is the one day where the shaitan, look, the shaitan is not locked up. This is not Ramadan. Okay. Yes, shaitan is still there. Desperate. Okay. Shaitan is still there and shaitan is more desperate than you are at this point. So shaitan is doing every one, every possible thing to make you angry, to make you irritated, to make you tired, uh, you know, to get you into an argument, to get you upset, to get you sick. Okay. So there's many, many, many things. The day of Arafah is one day. Just keep on making, before you go to Hajj and all throughout your time, before you go to Masa even, before you fly over, keep on making this dua. Ya Allah, give us, bless us with the pleasure of patience during Hajj. Bless us with an easy day on Arafat so we can focus on our ibadah. Keep on making the day. Yeah, make sure you ask on the day of Arafat. Every single time once you are in a haram, make sure you ask. You won't find these stuff in any lecture. That's our person, personal experience. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every single day. Ya Allah, whatever I'm planning for making my dua, bless me more than that. And give me an energy, give me a taqad, give, give me a kuwa to perform the best in my life. I wouldn't regret after performing the Hajj. Oh, I forget to ask this dua. Oh, I forget to ask this, that dua. Because ask everything in this life, for this life, for life after that, and for the beautiful bed. It's never ending. Because we had people with us who could not, I don't know, for whatever reason, they couldn't, they, they were just falling asleep. They slept all throughout and yeah. woke up a little bit, by, uh, woke up closer to Asr time and to make dua till Maghrib. And then we had some sweet, I don't even know, like, I don't know her. I don't, I don't know who she was, but she was in our camp and uh, she got sick and she did, oh, and yeah. she, she made all her effort, all her effort, all took all her energy to stay in Arafah and not leave. But guess what? She just was so the sick Zohar. that just before Zohar, she had to leave. And Just like they, the there is an ambulance, there is a helicopter. They have to took them out from the uh, grounds of Arafa. And so, so if you miss the Arafa, there is no composite. You have to come back later on. Oh, Hajj. She couldn't do Hajj while being there. Yes. Okay. So just keep on making dua even before you fly. Ya Allah, make this flight easy. Make us e make it easy for us Let to us get to Arafa. Another day of Arafa. Make it yeah. Make it make it possible. Make give us the energy to make dua in Arafa. Give us. The aqal, give us the, you know, the knowledge to make it the, the dua, um, dua the day of Arafah. Give us the strength, everything. Just keep on making dua for the day of Arafah. Keep on making dua. May Allah make it easy for you guys. Even easier than we had it, inshallah. 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 So the so, our day of Arafah was such a blessing. Was blessing we was we blessing. cannot complain a single thing about the Hajj, what Matafib did or not. But we are, alhamdulillah, blessed with a, such a beautiful day. I cannot explain you. Even I think we took a quick nap for an hour or uh, 40, less than an hour, less than an less hour, than an hour. Uh, before Zohar. Because we had been making dua, we had been praying, we had been praying. We had people around us who were saying, what are they making dua for? It's not even Zohar yet. Yes. <laughs> but and we like people been... are asking us, like, what are you guys doing? And, and, and some people think like that, uh, that camps of the, and the, that resort type of area is so comfortable. It shouldn't be like this or that. And I have no words to thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what I ask Allah and what he blessed to us. To us. 
and it was such a like alhamdulillah such a blissful time even though now said is once i was teaching uh, me and someone is teaching you guys all of these stuff we are feeling like we has like a goosebump it's look like a i we are holding your hand and walking our uh, again into the grounds of arafa inshallah grounds of uh, makkah and madina and you guys are making a dua and may allah subhanahu wa taala bless you with uh, with each and everything what you are asking for that day inshallah so let's begin with the organizing your dua books so first, first thing let me show you so your dua book should be like this much big that's all are you able to see this big so the hand size yeah yeah like the hands or this big it is also fine they both are same okay it shouldn't be bigger than this because if the bigger than this book you it would be hard to carry and it's enough trust me like we have so many duas and it this much book is enough for you even though our arabic duas are inside our our duas and our language is inside each and everything inside so etiquette of dua is very important and even though once we are in our houses we sometimes we forget sometimes we in we are in so much hurry and it's like a, just say alhamdulillah and read little bit of the askar and just make a dua but that is the proper etiquette of dua which someone will start um yeah so and this again we learn through lectures this yeah. is not, we, don't, we yeah. didn't know it on our own we yeah, learned yeah. through of lectures course. uh a major one being a model shukri he was really good uh, in his lectures and many other many other uh scholars so uh you know like start with the salawat allahumma salli ala we all know it right and this is one thing i guess me and asia me i don't know about you but i'm not really good at it like using uh, allah's beautiful names to call him and this is something that i guess we learned focused more after yeah. um, after hajj because when we were going to hajj people sent us duas to ask for them and many of those people used beautiful names of allah yeah in both call the upon names. allah yeah to call upon allah you know the protector for whatever dua they're making according to that dua they called upon that name and um since that time i've just been thinking i need to memorize all the names with meaning you know so um the book yeah sure she can do it's it. just like she that. she wants to know the exact size so exact size i would say 5 inches no no 6 inches nahi what you said here my hand is 7 inches 7 inches my hand my when i spread my hand camera was both which which camera is this? this oh my hand is 7 inches exactly so you see how spread from thumb to finger and we got it from the dollar store yeah dollar ama it's about 7 inches so and like about 6 inches here on this side it's a tiny book you can easily hold in your hand or easily hold in yeah. your backpack so um you know um, use allah's beautiful names to call upon him praise allah um thank for and be thankful for your bl blessings face the qibla and just raise your hands in a position of making dua you're really desperate right now right this is that yeah. day that allah is saying ask me i'm here ask me the angels are here to take a, just allah is telling you ask me for anything you want at this point right and you know don't ever think that i think we all do it like i'm such a bad person i have done this or i have done this or i have done that or i do this and am i even is anything of mine going to get accepted we don't know you don't know allah knows ask him and have faith that he will accept it and recently at the, one of the party lectures um our it was sheikh daud and he said um imagine uh, what was his name the guy who killed hamza radhiya taala and and, 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 and uh, like the the guy name is like uh, it's a vahshi vahshi yeah vahshi who was a slave who to men the umar salman like yeah to get free from his slavery he was told you need to kill hamza radhiyallahu anhu and he did he later he did convert to islam so even you know and he lived in guilt all his way, life way so even like and the sheikh was right if a person like him can go to jannah then why are you being the judge of if you're going to be accepted if your dua is going to be accepted have faith be sincere and whatever guilt you have ask allah to get to rid you of that guilt and rid you of those ways and take you to better allah, ways the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so big than our and like this is all the mercy of allah it. subhanahu wa ta'ala like allah's mercy allah's yeah. love for you okay so etiquettes of dua are as such believe me by the time you start you when you start with the salawat and then you use allah's beautiful names and then you are praising allah and then you're blessing allah, you will not even know by that time you're going to start hearing because just by reading all of this you're going to be thinking in your it's just it just starts coming to your head that 
oh my God, I have so much to ask for and so much more to be thankful for. And like, you just start crying by that time. And when you start crying and that dua comes out, I'm sure all of you sisters know. Yes. When you cry and those duas come out, they come out with much more passion than you can and even And that's add. what me and someone learned like the, in the etiquette of dua, like our hands supposed to be like this rather than having like this yeah. or like so this. You're begging, right? Yes. You're begging. You're and begging. Once, uh, uh, once of the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu with some rice, and like, I don't remember the exact word, but it says like once the servant Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like this. Allah feel, feel so shy to that hand let go with emptiness. So think about this, like yeah. how beautiful is this? Just doing this. That Allah that loves you so much that Allah does not want to turn his uh, hand away. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. part, his slave's hand away without giving. Him. Yes. So, you know, like that's that's the love of Allah. That's the mercy of Allah that Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. We're Muslims, we're blessed with it, right? Yeah, and the whole journey of Hajj from now <laughs> done with the Hajj, it's all about your yeah. Sorry, sorry, we're hearing somebody else talk. Uh, is are you guys asking something? Oh. Can you Sana, can you mute it? Thank you. I how can I mute them? I think you guys can mute him. Uh, okay. Yeah. Now she has muted. Okay. okay. So uh like so again back to where we're <laughs> The, inshallah it will be good so the you, whole yeah. time of the hajj from now till the end till you are done on the day of arafah is all about your niya and your intentions and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala judge you by your intention allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provide you sustenance and accepting your dua by your intention so make sure your intention has to be like once you make a niya for the namaz like just like a salah and you say allahu akbar you left the world behind just like once you make a niya for the hajj and you say Allah Allahumma labbaik, you left each and everything behind you. And your niya has to be so, so strong. No, no matter like how many times people are calling you from back, how many, how many things are coming on your way. And there is so many test and try, no matter you got your ticket and each and everything, there is so many test and try coming and multiple co uh, questions answered. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you that. Oh, there's a health issues comes up. There is a child issue comes up there is a vacations comes up there is so many things comes up and always Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you multiple choice and there is like the one answer on somewhere it says labbaik Allahumma labbaik so close your eyes and just be trust put your trust on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and show your like extreme tawakkal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pick labbaik Allahumma labbaik no matter what inshallah things will be falling apart like just like a puzzle and we're human, okay? So it's very hard to see somebody uh, sleep or talk and think, oh my God, what are they doing? No, 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 don't do that, okay? If as soon as you, even the thought comes to your mind, just be like, astaghfirullah, 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 and make dua. Because remember, shaitan is there. When your husband says, what are you doing? You haven't done this yet. Just smile and, mm -hmm. okay? What am, oh yeah. Sure. Um, you know, and so, um, as soon as you or somebody and, or you go out to get coffee or tea or ice cream or something, and somebody bumps into you or the tea's finished, or they spill the milk or something, because it's going to be chaos. It is going to be chaos. Okay. It's just a more better version of chaos because the Saudi government is providing a whole lot. Right. But it is chaos. Even when you're getting like, ah, oh, that person spill just just you know or the person and sometimes this. people step on your feet, feet and yeah. don't say anything just this one Allah, alhamdulillah just, Allah. yeah or astaghfar, 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 astaghfar. don't when, reply them back with a back look or anything just yeah just control yourself this is that day control yourself if you're getting annoyed by um yourself keep on reading astaghfirullah if you are getting because obviously if a person is sleeping or you're watching them do something th it's your problem that you have comments to make right yeah so uh, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. somebody steps on your feet or gives you a shove sometimes people just pass out like the psychotic coming oh look at her what, what she's wearing what is she what she's doing and like these are things happen just things happen yeah. just forget about it. like any comment you are here for you spend thousands of dollars to get the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not the not for the chit chat and making a friend over there 
this is once in a lifetime opportunity because after that you will perform thousands of hajj that are not counted as a fard. It's called to be a nafil hajj. So your fard has to be done at first time and it, that's all. And that's really good. Like you are, you guys are conscious about like, let, let you perform the best in the every manner. So here we come back like the Surya class. Like I know, I'm sure like lots of you know about this, but let me um, let me tell you one again. Once you read the Surya class 10 times, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala build the palace for you. Build the palace for that person. So once making a dua, why not recite the Surya class 10 times? If you are not able to recite it 10 times, like recite it three times. Three times reciting is, one time is reciting is like come for a one third of Quran. Three times is equal to the reward of that. But that doesn't mean like you are, you will be stopping, stopping to be, uh, stopping to be reading the Quran. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, okay. And there is a link in the bottom. You can check like where we got this snath and where the hadith and the website, what they say says about, which we will share you later on. Okay. Inshallah. So this is like. So this is like the most amazing thing which me and someone found out to making our dua book like the like organize our dua book. So here we go with the seven things. If you guys want to write it, it's up to you. Later on, we'll show you the link. Can you make the screen bigger? Which one is going to be for this? This is. Be this, is. Oh, okay. this is. So this is like the making your dua book include the seven things. And here we go. Bless the person who put this up. Hidayah. Okay. Bless the person who put this up. Uh, we divided our book into seven ways. And this number one was Hidayah, guidance from Allah. Uh, for those of you who speak French, I have made the slide in French too. I just have a little bit of translation more to do. Okay. So be patient. I'm almost done. Um, so Hidayah, guidance from Allah. And I wrote right on top that break it down into sections for yourself. Hidayah for yourself, Hidayah for your spouse, Hidayah for your kids and your other family members. Thank you, Asiyan, you added that right. For, and you're for other family members, whether it be siblings, uh, parents, whoever, okay? And th these are not, these are just a few tips to get you started. Obviously, when you start making your dua, you're going to find, oh, I need Hidayah in this, I need Hidayah in this and that. What is Hidayah? Guidance in everything. Hidayah doesn't mean only guidance of being a Muslim. No, being a Muslim means doing everything you do uh, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the way Allah has taught you. Even if it's something, even if it's showering, right? So, uh, hidayah uh, for making our ibadah better and focused. Hidayah when making decisions about marriage, building relationships, when dealing with your spouse, in happy moments and in conflicts. Ya Allah, give me guidance. Till this day, I mean, uh, I'm 37 for, you know, <laughs> so, and I have been married uh, by this July for 16 years. Until now, I, I even now when me and my husband get into a little conflict, I'll be like, Ya Allah, Mia, give me hidayah to deal with this issue. Or when I'm dealing with my kids, Ya Allah, Mia, give me hidayah. You so know, in every tiny thing, in financial decisions, decisions in buying a house, in uh, investing somewhere, in dealing with friends, in choosing a career, in choosing for those, for those of you who aren't married, in choosing a partner, in choosing a job, university. I can't, like, when you start making that dua, you're going to say hidayah for this. And I, I didn't write it down here, I guess, in this one, but make a list of, so you say Hidayah for kids, but what Hidayah? Make a list. Ya Allah, give my kids Hidayah when they are in their teenagers. When they're choosing friends. Ya Allah, Mia, give them Hidayah in their teen years. Ya Allah, give them yeah. Hidayah to always choose the right, choose the halal. Ya in Allah, some way. Yeah. And and like ya allah give them a hidayah when they are they are stuck between the right and wrong ya allah give ya allah give them a hidayah when they are making the decision for uh, someone for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so ya allah give them a hidayah for uh, choosing the right profession ya allah give them a hidayah when they are so desperate and they need the help from uh, someone ya allah always call them from the doors of mercy and give them a hidayah do not call from the doors of the patience and the doors of the troubles ya allah give them a hidayah because you know what ya allah give them a hidayah for uh, for doing the fasting of the month of ramadan and thereafter too ya allah give them a hidayah to wear the modesty clothing ya allah give them a hidayah not to argue with us being our parents once we are getting older ya allah give them a hidayah you know what that hidayah complete like our books like a chapter so mine and someone's like book of 
that with these seven things, it's like a chapter. We divided one for the kids, one for our husband, one for our affairs with the others. And you know what? So many people you meet in your life and they are not praying and they are not fasting. And they said, inshallah, one day Allah will give me a hidayah. Inshallah, I'll be like you. No, you didn't ask the hidayah to Allah subhanahu. So how come Allah give you a hidayah? You have to make a dua for hidayah. If you are not making a dua for hidayah, how come Allah give you, Allah bless you so many things. But the hidayah is a thing, even though we have to ask for the hidayah. We are not asking the hidayah for each and every matter of life. We are asking the hidayah only for the matter which comes up in front of our eye. We are never be prepared before ahead for the hidayah. Yeah. So this is your time to get prepared before ahead. So make a, make a section for yourself for your kids and when you're making it for yourself you're gonna you're gonna be like oh i want to ask this for my kids too or you made it for your kids oh i want to ask this for myself too because i also have parents right alhamdulillah so may, uh, elaborate basically the word is elaborate on each and elaborate. everything yeah allah get, my daughter is in journalism give her the hidayah to choose the right uh to to always present the right thing yeah allah my son likes so and so or my daughter likes so and so person yeah allah give her the hidayah the guidance to see the right and wrong of that person and make that decision before uh, it's too late so each and everything yeah allah my i i, I want to start a business yeah allah give me the hidayah to uh, earn halal and you and uh, progress on that business the guidance so there's a very nice lecture of Naman Ali Khan and uh you in, should put the link and Omar Suleiman. I don't know. <laughs> I've heard them so many times. I don't remember the link, but we'll have to look for them. Yeah, we will um, find it. But it's a very nice lecture. It's like, you know, you may ask Allah for a car, a house, um, health, whatever. Those it, it, is Allah gonna give you those? We don't know, right? Allah decides what he wants to give you at what time. Yes. But the one thing that Allah will always give you is guidance. It's guidance. It's guidance. And one more thing, like when uh, before starting, like even though before the starting of the dua, we should tell them to everyone, once you are making a dua and you want the angels to be a part of dua and they will say the amin for on your behalf. So make sure always remember others, like a bunch of people ask them, like, do you need any dua? I am going for the hajj. So just let them the news and ask and collect their dua. Because if we are making yeah. the dua on someone's behalf, the angel present for us and angel and Angels say Amin as well for you too. Yes. So make sure like always ask the dua for others. Do not like be pity and like I have I have no time like just to make my own dua because the day of Arafah I still remember I don't have a single minute to scratch my head because I have so many amana of the duas which I have to give it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because people ask people tell me because I ask them do you have any dua people are telling me like yes do this and that and I write each and every dua. Yeah, we wrote every dua. Every dua with their own name, with their, their name, personal yeah. wishes. And we will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day we didn't be, uh, left anyone's dua behind. First we asked for others and then we'll start ours. And then we were and we were a bit conscious. So we said Amin at everything. Okay. Yes. Amin, 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 Amin. Amin basically your means that you know you ask for dua, yes, but when you're saying Amin, you're saying yeah, Allah, no, I give it to me, give it to me, Amin, like give it to me, you know. Yes. So uh, we wrote duas, we took name, we wrote names and we wrote um, duas as everybody uh, told us um, what they wanted. Like So the second part of your uh, book subject is a maqfira. is a forgiveness. So many times, like we will totally forget about the maqfira, like the what we did it and what's going to be happen, even though you ask the maqfira for your offsprings. You never know your dua will go how far. Because the blessings of Allah, the mercy of Allah, it doesn't stop on the day of Arafat. Whatever you ask on that day, if you ask for your whole zuriyat and your whole offspring, it will go to generation to generation. Yeah, imagine Almost the like Prophet made Prophet Sallallahu made dua for his ummah. And look at us. Look like, how far yeah. of ummah we have. You know, like it's so. As parents, we should be able to make. Du we should make dua for our kids and their kids and the kids and even them. though for the maqfira and for the guidance and every dua whatever you guys are making make sure at your office springs and your kids office spring and everyone which is like which is belongs to you your parents your siblings your their kids so asking for the forgiveness like you are thinking ya allah forgive me which we usually did it before the hush like ya allah forgive, forgive me, me. Allah me. and that's it 
Forgive for what? You know your faults and everything. Lying, backbiting, missing the salah, missing the so many fasting. Fast once we are young, we didn't get the chance to cover that fasting up. Like so many things. Yeah, like, losing patience, getting losing angry, patience. feeling weak and some, you know, getting into the weakness at time and doing riba at the talking about others, backbiting. Like we get into it. We're human. We know that. And Allah knows us. Allah made us. Allah made us. Allah knows that. But He's looking for repentance. Repent, repent, repent. And, repent. and you know what? Once you are asking the repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make sure to add your generation and your future generation and the kids for that maqfira and that for forgiveness. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, forgive my kids if they did this and this and this wrong. Because the things happen, you never know. And I don't think it's listed in here, but ask Allah to guide your, your generations to ask for forgiveness. Yes. Many people will not ask for forgiveness thinking, oh, we're not going to be forgiven for this. We knew it was wrong. We did it. Yes. We're not going to be forgiven. Or I, I'm i not a very pious person. I'm not going to be forgiven. No, 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 no. You, so many people say, eh, you know, Allah's not going to listen to me. I don't even pray. Yeah. No, 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 no. Make dua to ask, uh, make dua that Allah guides you, your future generations to come to ask for repentance. Even we need guidance in even asking for repentance. Imagine the first, the thing we said guidance. Now we need guidance in asking for repentance. So keep on making that uh, dua for repentance and list it. I wrote here, list them one by one making while you're making that dua because only you know your weaknesses. Only you know your secret gunas, on, uh, your secret sins. Only you know them. Just so, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in quiet way, in a, whatever manner you would like to be, call your Lord. And once you are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make sure it goes through the, uh, I add the, like that there is a slide and there's a link. I added like the names of Allah with the translation, how you call invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the beautiful names. Call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ya afu, because that is yeah, your okay. name. Like you're going to forgive each and every one. Because why? Because you are Ya Rahim, you are Ya Rahman, and the mercy of Allah is not equal to the mercy of any human being. So call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the beautiful names of Allah. You never know which which way of your dua will touch the touch the arsh. And your the the lives of your generation will become awesome. Yeah, and even as it's Hajj, you do get tired. Even as for forgiveness, that Ya Allah, if I hurt somebody during this time. Or whoever you're traveling with, maybe yeah. you're people, maybe you're with strangers in a room, right? So yeah, Allah forgive me if I hurt somebody unintentionally or intentionally, or at a weak moment where I got angry, where I got irritated. I really so, love it. The someone add the forgiveness for paying the interest. So um, oh because in here the life is so much like blocked with this. No matter what, once you guys are making the dua for the interest, do not forget me and someone, <laughs> please. So, when we bought our houses, we didn't want to. Yeah. Um, so the nasra, the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the help we ask once the matter come and stand in front of us and then we will ask and we'll go for the, keep praying for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ya Allah, shall we go for hajj, ya Allah, make the things easy for us. No, make a dua for the nasra before our head. Like what kind of help you need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for your kids, for yourself and for your coming up life and again for your whole zuriyat. Like that Nasra needs to be done. Like that, that help of Allah needs to be done before ahead. This is a opportunity Allah give you to be stand in the day of Arafah. You never know your generation will come when. So give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help, to let them help ya Allah to plan for the Hajj with the full knowledge and the way we are doing it better than us. That is yeah. a help from Allah. So uh, I, uh, that's a good point. I didn't actually, I don't actually have it in there. Yes, ask for Nusra before hand. Ask for Allah help in uh, applying, in making your payments go through, in making your biometrics go through, in making your visa come, you know, a day before uh, we have, we, our flight is the next day and we don't have a visa. Yeah. I, I didn't have, I was the only one left. I didn't have my visa. I got it in the morning. You got it in the evening. And the day before we don't have the visa, Nothing. everything planned, the boudoir book, this and that. Payment is and gone. Everything is gone. Not. And I don't have my visa. Why? Yes. Because uh, they don't have the coordination among them. So why, I, I didn't sit and wait. It was her. She kept on pushing me. She's like, call them, call them, call them. I called uh, the the Hajj team that was there. That who are we? Who they are we going through? Be in Ottawa. Yeah. And then I called no the embassy in Ottawa. Yeah. And I we had to make them coordinate. So I was like, I'm leaving tomorrow. Everything is done. Everybody in my team got a visa. My group got a visa. How come I don't have it? 
And it would, and had I not gotten on the phone since the morning, by four o'clock, he said we would have closed everything. Because that day was the half day for the embassy for the working. And I still remember the every single minute is so painful, so panicked, so much a struggle. You guys cannot, I can, I don't want you to be get scared, but. But make that dua. Make oh she's God. right. I, I'm going to add it to the slide. Help ask for Nusra now. Ask for Nusra now to make your process of Hajj easier i to make you will be standing in that day to make your flight easy to make your if you're if you have bodily pains to make your uh, uh ya allah help us through that journey uh so we stay healthy ask for nusra now yeah. and of course i these are just a few pointers you guys these are just a few pointers you can expand them as you can many expand as you. them right uh, these are just from our minute minor knowledge we're like yeah, we're, we like i wish we had scholars to explain this to us one on one but yes. we don't right um, and the last point with summon mentioned over there i i have like focused on that point so much because held the attention of the khushu the pleasure in your abada in your salah in your uh, reading reciting the quran and that khushu comes once you ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because so many people you see like they once they are reciting the Quran and standing in the Salah, they will start crying. They will feel each and every word that that thing doesn't come up like directly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't bless them like, oh, here you go. That's your gift. Somebody asked on their behalf or they ask the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's why they have such a kushur in their ibadah. They cannot skip or miss any single raka. They can, they are not like us, like they are standing, oh, is this the first raka or second raka? Let me do the sajda so. Oh, no, no, no. Um, um, I have to go pick up my, okay, uh, you know, I'm reading Surah Fatih and I'm thinking I have to go pick up my son. And then he has. And the WhatsApp ringing. Yeah, yeah. Someone and calling. Oh, somebody must have messaged me. Oh, I have to do this for my daughter. Oh, I have this on the stove. Oh, I have this. Or should I, you know, like I'm thinking, oh, next Friday is that party. Oh, Eid is coming up. Like literally brain is everywhere, but Salah. And I think for us, it's a me. I I don't know. Maybe the Arabic speakers can uh, chip in. We don't speak Arabic. It's hard for us to yeah. connect when we're, we don't understand the language we're reading. And that's why we have begun looking at meanings of, you know, like when I read Surah Fatiha, I remember the meaning. Yeah. So, um. And it's still asking the khushu, the yeah. love and the pleasure. Once, when the azan will be called, we have to run because the every word of azan is literally has a beautiful meaning because whatever it says like hayyala salah. Like the come towards the success. What is the success? How can we come? We don't understand the meaning of the success. We are like, okay, let me finish this and let me finish that. That is not the success. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the pleasure and the pursuit of salas and your ibadat and your office spring coming up, your office springs, your children's and everyone's. Like they will be praying in an excellent manner how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the prophets. I think we'll have to add it in here. Ammar ul Shukri has a very good lecture series about attaining khushu in salah. Yeah, and when I yeah. when I heard that, I was like, oh my God, most of my salah is gone to wait. I, just, done. I don't know how much salah I paid attention to. So here we come, the kapuya. Acceptance. Acceptance. So what will happen? Like once we done with the dua, I asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so many times and nothing gonna happen. And I'm done. Like I'm not gonna give it anything like because Allah is not giving me this and that. Did you ever ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, accept, accept my it. duas. Ya Allah, accept my ibadahs. Ya Allah, accept my salahs. Ya Allah, accept my fastings. Ya Allah, accepts my children's fasting. Ya Allah, accepts our good deed, which we always show off to others. Like, Ya Allah, accept whatever ibadah we are doing in the manner to get the your pleasure. But we will end it up show off to others. And I put this on the top because I think, I don't know, maybe it's closer to my heart. Acceptance of repentance. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, I always come to Asya. I'm like, Asya, you know, I got angry. I did this. Asya, I did this. <laughs> and acceptance of repentance. Acceptance of soft repentance. repentance. Because accepting, once you accept it, you did something wrong. There's always a soft corner in your heart. And the, the book of the forgiveness and the book of the acceptance and the maqfira from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is open. Because if you feel you are wrong, that is a very good thing. Because that's mean you have a soft corner. You have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your heart. Again, I said, break it down into sections for yourself, for yeah. your spouse. So, you know, I know my husband. And obviously before going to Hajj, I asked him, I'm like, listen, I'm going to be making dua. What do you want me to say for you? He was laughing. He's like... You know, I'm your husband. Ask for my help. Ask for this. I'm like, no, tell me seriously. Like, I'm listing this. Give me, don't just assume I know everything. 
you what, what's between you and Allah is not between you and me so you have to tell me what you want for so I made notes of everything you know we, we, yeah, we did I know yeah I Allah, remember because our husbands get really, really like they are making a fun of us it's like boy are you women's you are you guys are writing and writing and writing all the time it's like hey, we need it because you know what in so many hutch lectures we heard about the Yasir Qazi and everyone is saying you get tired your dua has to be returned you know what you have to ask because what will happen once uh, we are not prepared for the exam no matter how much you study you will forget when the question come up you are keep thinking boggling your mind here there you are thinking what do i have to do and after, in the day of arfa again like it it is a hard day it is a long day even though it's a very short day but it looks like a long day because of the tiredness you will forget about your duas so if your dua has to be returned by your hand, so what will happen? That return duas are marked in your heart and mind. Yeah. And no, I'm, you don't need even though the book. Sometimes you might need it. I barely opened yes. this book uh, because, because I wrote down the duas. Yeah, I wrote down the duas. And you know, when you're in Makkah, you're focused. You're not in this dunya. When you're in Makkah, it's honestly, you are focused. Uh, but it's when you come back, that's when you, you, you're uh, making these duas for your life. Or, you know, outside of Maharam, right? Yeah. In Haram, you're there for a few days and you're completely focused. Um, oh, e Afia. This was, uh, my goodness, I ease in like, in I, 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 the list goes on and it's on never and uh, on. Afia in uh, offering prayers on time, very, very important. Allah's least favorite people among many other lectures, obviously, hmm. are those who offer their salah last minute. And even after doing Hajj, I, I can speak for myself. I do it so many times last minute because yes. I'm it's happened. dropping off my kid here, there. Like, why? Why? We will be why? like occupied in the worldly life, like so much. And we know the things. And you know what? Like sometimes, even though I feel so bad, like I teach my kids this and that. I teach a bunch of the kids this and that. And now why I am getting late? Why like Shaitan occupied me? Why I cannot take myself out from all of this worldly affair? Yeah. And I... Second, I put the next run that's highlight, highlighted is ease during Hajj. Make that dua. Please, 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 please. Make that dua now. Ya, may Allah make it easy for all of you. This Make this process easy for you, inshallah. Make your flights easy for you, inshallah. Make your transportation from Jeddah to Makkah easy for you, inshallah. Even though make the Medina easy for you and getting to the part of the Riyazul Jannah easy for easy you. Easy for you. May, may if you are Himma mm. and the Taqa mm. to perform, because once you reach to the Makkah, you were so tired, no matter how much energetic you the time of the Hajj, but you were so tired because I still remember, let me add the one little story here. Once we are done with the Hajj and everything, and we sit in a car and now the car has to take us to the Medina. That moment, I still never forget. I feel like there is a string which is attached to my heart and somebody's scratching it like very badly. And I feel so much pain. I was remembering each and every moment which I spent in the Makkah. And the first time if I say, I feel the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the love of the Fashur of my Ibadah. I, I, I desperately missing the Mina camp area, the Jamrat walking, the tiredness and everything. Like I, I cannot explain you, even though you all feel the same way. That was the day once I feel First time in my life, how much I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I never realized it. Like this is the first time I, I don't remember anything on the way towards going to the Medina. Just the one thing, the tear falling from my eye until we reached to the Medina. And the boundary of Medina come. There was a, like a happiness to come to the city of the Prophet Muhammad But there is an extreme pain inside the heart to leaving the Medina. To leaving the Makkah. And to leaving all the arkan, and now we are done. The hajj is done. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let us free to go into the world. And now you have to carry yourself. It's scary. It's very, very scary. It's a little bit scary. Why? Because you're you're scared of how you're going to just fall back into this dunya. So easily. It takes a snap and you fall, fall back here. And at the same time, so I, it, so we were really opposite partners in many ways. <laughs> Asya was more worried that, oh my God, are we ever going to come back? And she was, uh, her level of dua is a whole different. She has a direct, <laughs> she has a direct connection to Allah SWT. No, 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 no. Make sure it happens, right? So she was more worried. I was also upset, but I wasn't crying like her. But in my, because I guess we come from different backgrounds too. Yeah. In my head, I was like, you know what? I made so much dua. Allah is going to bring me back. And Allah has always brought me back. 
I have, Inshallah. Alhamdulillah, 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 Alhamdulillah. Going to Saudi Arabia, Alhamdulillah, has never been a problem. Uh, you know, so I, in my head, I'm thinking, you know, I am upset, but then Allah, I've seen my parents go back multiple times. Inshallah, I will also go back so much times. I was thinking that day till now, our first is done. No matter what, our like, first is done. Yes. time. But is Allah accept what the first we have been go through? No, like, so, and this is so many things. So I would watch her cry and I'm thinking, <laughs> is there something wrong with me? Like, why is she crying so much? And why am I not crying? <laughs> I mean, do I not feel the same? But then I realized, so I'm telling this because everybody's different. Everybody's yeah. different, right? Uh, so don't feel kind of like, am I not, you know, am I not? Do I do I not love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enough or do I not love making ibadah enough that I'm not, you know, dying to, I'm not crying while leaving Makkah? I cried. I cried. Uh, we were, we did our sahih at different times. So yeah. uh, I, oh, sorry, our mm, tawaf at tawaf different times. Yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah. Tawaf al Tawaf al we did at different times. So me, I cried at that time and I was done and I cried. Why? Because I mean, I was crying and I was making dua. And the reason I was done because I was like, no, I asked Allah to bring me back here again and again and again and again. And I still remember and it will happen inshallah. Once you know? I was doing my last uh, last circuit of the tawab, the seventh, I wish like the world stop here, the time stop here. That's what someone's story. My story is this. Like I feel like that seven round never ends. And like I have been keep going, keep going. And that seven round, I have nothing to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I look at the Kaaba and my eyes are like on the Kaaba. And I was just asking one thing, Allahumma inna kafuun tuhibbu lafwafafwani. Like even though Allah give me a life for a long and inshallah I'll come back. but. I have no words because the leaving the Kaaba, no matter what, like how much you feel it or not, it's make you a little bit pain in your heart because there is something that the spiritual journey that touch your heart. Because you know, when a baby's leaving the protection of the mother, you will see tiny kids. Yeah. They, look, was, they will I, look back. Yeah, I was crying and then they so move. badly. My husband is saying like, let's go, let's go. Like, and I was like, like look at the cars of uh, time is waiting for us. Now our time is done. And Allah, so we have to say, Bye to the Makkah. We have to say that was our last tawaf. And I still remember once I do the last sajda on the floor of Aharam, it's looked like I am a kindergarten child and I don't want to. That was up. our last tawaf for Hajj. <laughs> yeah. Last we, will, we will inshallah yeah, get many more inshallah, tawafs. Inshallah. 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 So ease in everything. Ease in you practicing your religion. Ease in dressing modestly. Ease in making salah. Ease, ease, ease in doing ghusl. Ease in uh, a relationship with your husband. Ease in relationship with your in-laws. Ease in relationship with your parents. Ease in getting your kids married. Ease in talking to your kids. Ease in hoping, you know, ease in for your kids to understand you. Ease, yeah. ease in everything. When you start writing down, you are going to see that ease in everything. Ease in lifting for those of you. And I see this when... When we go to the mosque, there's so many older ladies. Yes. And you know, when I see them and I'm thinking, oh my God, is this going to be us? Because they're this old and their legs are hurting. My legs are already hurting. So I'm thinking, you know, and I start making dua, Ya Allah, make it easy for me to perform wadu, to for perform salah in my old age. Ease in everything. Make sure you make that list and ask. Dollarama. Dollarama has that uh, notebooks available. Either this one or this one. Any dollar store. They're like yeah. everywhere everywhere um okay so ease in everything and think about your future right ease in uh, um, uh living in your old age so yes everything everything so like even though we describe so much but there's so much left no matter what this class is not enough we it will be goes for hours and hours and inshallah may allah give all of you to able give you the ability once you are summarize these uh these seven sentences like the seven words you will be doing it the best of your job inshallah uh, afsha we will tell you right now when what dua you make when you first see the kaaba yeah it's really hard uh, to decide yes uh, and then now we'll go quickly with the hifaza. Hifaza, yeah. hifaza is the protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask that protection for each and every matter. Again, the illnesses during the hajj time, protect your iman, protect your office springs iman, protection from the heart and protection from the time of the jal and protection from the time of the jal. If your generation live and that, that time, let them be a Muslim. Ya Allah. Protection for each and every azab, yeah, protection from the earthquake, protection from the climate, the musibah.
musiba they that came to your towards you do you never know what things comes in, are coming up in the future for you protection for each and every matter of the life and uh, and after the life ask the protection from the azab of the qabr ask the protection from the azab of the um, azab of the uh, like uh, once we will be in the our graves ask allah subhanahu wa taala from the protection of the quran the quran will be your best companion in in that time as the protection on the day of judgment once allah subhanahu wa taala giving the things in your hands your books in your hand give them on the right hand ya allah protect me from the azab ya allah protect me from your anger ya allah protect me like there's so much to tell you like and inshallah you will be know like better than us what you have to, to ask. ask yeah inshallah yeah let me move on like that the rida and the pleasure of allah rida and the pleasure of allah yeah so pleasure of allah is uh it's a bit of con it's it's so uh it's a little bit of the confusion or what no say? no it's not confusion it's sometimes as humans it's really hard to ask like what are you asking for right so i put that um aya from surah al um, ahzab verse 15 that with the translation that was the translation. Dua of Dar Suleiman al-Islam yeah and uh, um and the ayah begins a Rabbi bit no the, this this part begins in the middle of the ayah yeah the ayah it begins a little bit um, different before i had yeah, yeah yeah it is so anyway so i put this and you say you, you, and you see that you know allah's favors upon you are his pleasure like he's pleased with you so i first i wrote this down then i changed again and i was like okay no no I, what we're asking is for allah's pleasure so we're asking, how do you know Allah's pleased with you? You know, Allah's pleased with you when your parents are pleased with you. Allah is pleased with you when your um, community is pleased. when you when you make salah. Yeah, Allah's pleased with you when your neighbors are pleased with you. Now, does that mean, oh well, you know, my neighbor does not like that I'm Muslim, so should I do what my neighbor likes? No, no, no. no. Allah is pleased with you when you do everything for the sake of Allah, as Allah has described it. Okay. Um, uh, so ask for Allah's pleasure in paradise and not not His anger or hellfire. Ask for Allah's uh, ask Allah the pleasure of patience. Ask Allah's pleasure of modesty. Ask Allah's pleasure in communication. Ask Allah's pleasure in softness in your tongue. Ask Allah's pleasure of ease. When Allah is Allah is providing you ease and health and everything, this is all Allah's pleasure, right? Um, Allah's pleasure of love of parents. Allah's pleasure of being a mother or being a child or being a parent. Allah's pleasure in the favors, uh, millions of favors in risk, in respect, in, in everything. health and in health, health and right? in your. So these are Allah's pleasures for you. Yes. You know, um, Surah Rahman basically. Yeah. Again, and again, if you, when you read Surah Rahman, you will see, you know, which of Allah's um, favors, favors you, you are will going you to deny, deny, right? Yeah. Th these Allah's flavors. And you know what? We uh, are not favors so are thankful yeah. servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So many times we forget, uh, we ask and ask, we not thanking to Allah. Allah bless us this and that, whatever. Allah bless you, be happy with that. Because that is the, you are asking what is the best for, uh, what is like you are looking for best for you. And Allah is giving you what is the bestest and the better for you. Yeah, and you don't know why it's better for you but uh, you know what like ask that pleasure of Allah for each and every matter and hear that the seven things which we found it like our books are or like a like a essay books going to be these seven points because of these seven points so you can make start making your um, book of the dua with these seven points and this dua which um this someone edited here Rabbi Auzaini and Ashkura Nematallati Anamta Alayya Wa Baladayya Wa Amal Aswani In Tarada Wa Aslahli this is the dua i love it the one sister asked it like what should i read once i saw the kaaba first you know what there is no specific dua once you look at the kaaba at the first sight what you have to what you have to recite honestly speaking if you never been to the makkah was first time once you saw the kaaba you will be like ah yeah wow. so that's like that exactly because of that I had planned my dua in my head. Yes. And you know what? I'm <laughs> you could say I'm a gigantic kid. But uh at the first time you see the Kaaba, ask for there's no particular dua. Yes. Ask for anything you want. Yes. Okay? Ask for anything you and want. And every uh, every eyesight goes towards like if your umrah is done and you go back to the Kaaba, you look the Kaaba again with that 
again like you are looking at like a first time yeah it's like a, every eyesight goes like this so there is a dua was which i picked it for my time of umrah and i really love this dua rabbi auzaini because it's complete the favors upon me my parents and it's include the office springs of us the righteous office spring so i really uh love this dua to be like i want to recite it as many time during the tawaf um uh, tawaf of kaaba and i really love this dua and there's another dua um allahumma aini ala zikri ka wa shukri ka wa husni ibadati ka that is also a very beautiful dua let me go begin with our dua this these are the niya so whatever niya you wants to make like we did this one allahumma labbaik allahumma hajj labbaik allahumma umrah yeah, so you hajj. can yeah. go with any of these three duas if you are performing the hajj tamaddun so the niya is here and if you are uh, going with the, any other type of hajj that is a bedwa so this is a dua entering to the masjid most of you know about this allahumma fattah li abwaaba bi rahmatika so we added uh, and you can add this to allahumma inni as'aluka min fazlika so again like i added the allahumma fattah li abwaaba bi rahmatika bi ni'matika the doors of rahma the doors of ni'ma the doors of uh, uh, education the ilmi ka bi ilmi ka bi fazli ka bi sahati ka yani i added like as many as i can do it so i add that less later on in the slide uh, abwaaba can... means door right so yeah. you can say door of mercy you can say door of hell the door of a, a risk everything you can just keep on saying asking right? so yeah. allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here i made this slide just for you guys so so many of you even though before umrah it's been a long time and if you are not never been to the makkah so this is a green light every time this green light has that the same pointer that is a green light which is marked with a green uh, box here you start your tawaf uh, and you will raise up your right hand up and you will say allahu akbar allahu akbar bismillah allahu akbar allahu akbar three times and now you have to make a tawaf start making your first round and you are keep saying the takbirat and tarmiya and you can make any, any dua there's no first round dua second round dua and use wisely the askar which is high ha higher in the scale of the mizan la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahul mulku wa lahul hamdu wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir subhanallahi walhamdulillah wallahu akbar wala hawla wala quwwata illa billahi al-aliyy there's so many beautiful duas of a very little and there's a dua like say allahumma allahumma qalni jannatul firdaus the person whoever asked three times allahumma qalni jannatul firdaus allahumma qalni jannatul firdaus allahumma qalni jannatul firdaus the fourth time the land of jannatul firdaus say amin ya allah let this person enter into me you can ask this dua and that the allahumma journey when an nar once you say three time the land of hell fire say ya allah do not enter this person into me amin So how beautiful is the dua and how beautiful is the place where you can make these duas. So only the rukne yamani and between the hajj aswad there is a place where the prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم used to recite Rabbana atina fid dunya hasanah. Here is the place like which says like rukne yamani the which is marked with the red and the hajj aswad between them like there is a place where prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم used to recite Rabbana atina fid dunya hasanah. uh okay. so you can add even though you can uh prolong this dua you can add waqina azaban nar waqina azaban qabr waqina azaban hashr waqina azaban mizan like mm-hmm. you can add as many words as you can with these dua it's, and you can so, any dua in your language any dua that you guys write down in arabic uh if it's not your language please look at the meaning when you see the meaning you will realize that oh how you can add on to it right mm-hmm. so rabbana atina fid dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirah hasanatan wa qina azab an-nar wa qina azab al-mizan wa qina azab al-hashar wa qina azab al-qabr wa qina azab al well i added i also added fitnat ad-dajjal <laughs> what if i'm alive then you know so uh add all to this and you just have to read it from uh what is it ra rukne yamani till the hajj hajj so that's it that's it that and then you keep on making your duas whatever the dua book make your duas make duas for your kids and do not get distracted the people are making the dua in arabic i don't know any arabic how do i am going to make a dua no Doesn't just matter. focus on make your thing all because... you have to do is when you see the green light you have to keep on doing allahu akbar allah, bismillah allahu akbar allahu akbar allahu akbar three times and start making, making your, your duas okay and the zikr like she said you know uh, heavy in mizan like them, which are really important you know 
la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahu al-mulku that one or la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah al-aliyyil azim any other like this you remember or subhanallah wa bihamdihi yada khalqihi wa rida nafsi li zina tarqimata keep on making these zikrs uh, if you are uh, if your mind is all of a sudden blank a lot of people go through it make that zikr okay keep on making that and you know what the sound of labbaik allahumma labbaik you heard all the way once you are coming towards the kaaba and suddenly you, every sound is to stop in front of you the kaaba and and it looks something so different you just look like a, you are such a small child and you are present in front of the principal or somewhere and why the allah subhanahu wa taala look there was a my assumption like once we are keep reciting a labbaik allahumma labbaik and once we enter into the kaaba why we stop because once you are your teacher is calling your name sana 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 once you say present and look at your te- towards your teacher you cannot say present 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 because you are the eye of your teacher upon you now that is the point labbaik allahumma labbaik and once you enter into the uh, into the mataf and you look at the kaaba you have to stop allah know you are here and now make us whatever you whatever beautiful duas you have allah allah bring you here now allah is looking at you ask to allah subhanahu wa taala and the first like, first time once you are performing the tawaf in the time of umra you feel like a such a small baby and you are walking around the kaaba and you feel like crying and what do i have to ask allah subhanahu wa taala allah subhanahu wa taala is looking at me directly and in the people of the thousands of people look like a ground of hushar like a, the day of judgment nobody care about anyone you are only care about yourself your duas even though you are with your spouse and this and that and no matter what let me tell you one thing you are not going to loss anywhere because that is a place of allah subhanahu wa taala that is a house of allah subhanahu wa taala wherever you go in this world you make the you read the duas why to protect it you got need the protection from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so what you got in a thing once you are in front of the uh, in in the mataf and making a dua you will be lost allah make you lost in this uh, in this circuit of the tawaf no even though if you are par- for a little bit of the time you are apart from the, your partner it will be fine inshallah you will be they, he will be fine you or you will be fine her inshallah inshallah and just focus on your dua don't waste your time don't waste your time Jazakallah. Jazakallah guys for the so here we go the maqam Ibrahim which you able to see it some of you are able to see the uh, footprint of Ibrahim alayhi salam it's good to be as to the ziyara of the footprint and then leave behind the maqam Ibrahim and uh, read to the so ma- behind the maqam Ibrahim you will able to see the masjid entrance if there is no space and people are not praying over there don't try to pray just beside the uh, behind of the maqam Ibrahim people got to step on you and you are blocking the tawaf so go as much as possible further back and recite two rakat and in the first rakat that was the sunnah of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, surah kafirun and the second rakat is uh, surah ikhlas qul allahu akbar mm, yeah, okay surah ikhlas surah kafirun and surah ikhlas okay so this picture happens to be one of those times maybe that i don't know it's not crowded or whatever um it is crowded so no no i mean in in the sense that uh, you know like, yeah, they, i think it's a time of namaz namaz that's yeah, why so anybody, is basically sitting. anybody who was doing tawaf at that time sits there right yes but when you're done your tawaf and you then you have to read two uh, sunnahs um, behind maqam ibrahim nafil nafil. Na, oh, nafil sorry so you know you don't don't make, you don't have to be right behind it You yeah, can, it's okay. That's fine. You can anywhere. go to the masjid area, and if there is no space, like let's wait and go a little more further. That's yeah. fine. Your niya, your intentions, and you're not supposed to face Muqam Ibrahim. You're facing the Kaaba, but it's in the direction because, like, it's you're right behind, like. Muqam Ibrahim is behind and the Kaaba is in the front. Muqam Ibrahim and Kaaba, yeah. Too, because of the not having a knowledge, they will turn back. towards the kaaba and doing the namaz uh, two nafil towards the maqam ibrahim, maqam ibrahim. No, yeah, you no. don't supposed to do that you're facing behind the, the kaaba. kaaba so there's a kaaba up front there's maqam ibrahim and you're behind it you're yes. here you're not yes. going the other way okay and you can you don't have to be right there you can go back in the masjid as long as you're in that same direction yes. you're fine and sometime here there a little bit it's also it's okay. fine like you don't supposed to do this because that was going to be a crowd of hajj and it's so packed people yeah uh many many times uh in fact one time uh, may allah bless that man he was with his old mother and he protected me uh because people were going to step over me while i was praying 
He literally stood there and guarded me. I have no idea who that man is. Yeah, there is someone, angel can come in the form of angel and they will protect you. And because you are here for the pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the responsibility of Allah. Forget about each and everything. You are a guest of Allah and you are like, you know what? Allah is the best mezivan. So what you going to think? Like somebody going to step on you and you will be a bloody from all over your body? No, don't fear anything. Just fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do the right thing. Inshallah, Allah will protect you. Inshallah, inshallah, inshallah. So this is the story of the Maqam Ibrahim. Here we, let me tell you one thing because so many sisters ask me like if the azan will happen, should we stop the tawaf? Some, some of you don't know about this. You will stop your tawaf. Where you stop, you have to start it right then there. If you forget, like I stopped Maqam Ibrahim or here, there. So it's fine. Add one more round. Add one more round. Okay. So after the Maqam Ibrahim, you have to drink the Zamzam water and you have to read this dua. And so memorize this dua because as many times as you are reading the, um, uh, drinking the zamzam, so read that dua. So let me hear uh, one more thing. Like that was my own like, personal thing, which I did it. So whenever I was um, ma making a, uh, reading the salah in the mataf, so my first uh, thing is this, like I have to go inside the mataf and I want to read all my prayer in front of the Kaaba, no matter what, like how much crowd is there. So I always make a struggle to go inside the Kaaba and in, in, not the inside in the mataf area. So Alhamdulillah, I find every single time the best spot. A spot and my thing is this i want to be sit beside the zamzam cooler because so many people from here and there they want to get the water and i want to fill their water bottle to get the more ajar because they are not my cousin they are not my friend once they say ya allah accept your duas ya allah make the hajj easy for you there was the dua i cannot forget it so there was a small action of the charity but look at this like that small action is multiplied by like a one lakh or a thousand times because yeah. the, whatever you did the good in haram, it will be multiplied by this. So that is my personal experience. So I would suggest you because it's sometimes it's disgusting. It's water all over the place. But you know what? Where anyway. I get the chance to sit between the zamzam and giving the water to the guest of Allah. And um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me that opportunity to be hosted them on behalf of Allah. So you know what? That was a wonderful thing. I, I'm put it like by myself when I teach someone and, and, and my other partner. So that was my always struggling point, like inside the haram, outside the haram, nearby the Zamzam cooler. I saw the people running and they would not want to able to sit. And even though they want to able to sit to get the Zamzam, I, I asked them, can I, can I please? That's the thing. Some people can't even bend down to get the water. Okay. So it's, it's, if you're there to help, help you others. get the other. Yeah. So just passing on water, 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 water to people. It's quick ajar. You know? And you know what? You will find so many poor people who is asking you the money or something. You know what? Don't say this. Oh, look at that people. They are in the house of Allah and they are begging and this and that. Do not lose your patience. Just keep the sum real, like a uh, two real, three real. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just give them and go away. Because you are doing it for the sake of Allah. Do not judge them. Do not say anything. Or if you don't have anything, just say, yes. you know, so, uh, sorry. And, you know, and move away. Just don't pass a comment. Yeah. So this is the area of Safa and Marwa. So where you have to supposed to start, like I am not able to find the best picture of Safa, which I am looking for, but this is a place where the Safa and Marwa begin. So the, that is a, a place where the Safa you will stand here where this is Safa start and towards the Kaaba. You will able to see the little bit of the Kaaba and make a dua. And then you will start making the round, um, running towards the, sahi. the sahi. Yeah. sahi. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a green light you will be able to find in that place of the Sahi. Man should uh, run. The woman shouldn't run between these parts. Woman shouldn't run. Woman has to walk modestly. And once you are doing the Sahi and your feet get tired, pour the Zamzam get closer by the zamzam cooler what we did it and we find it like a very very beneficial our pain goes our, our feet doesn't get tired and it's happened because that was the first day in the makkah for you and your feet are not used to of walking this much so it might get tired so and reading your salawat uh, sending the salawat to the prophet Muhammad and uh, make your mind think about this the journey of hajra and baby smile once you are walking between the Safa and Marwa and feel their pain. That's the whole point. That was the you're, whole point. Do not be like a blank. I am in the Sahih ground and just let me run. Because when you're doing Hajj, you're not yes. doing Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's 
سننا دس از یو ڈو ایٹ ابراہیم علیہ السلام سننا پٹ سٹیپ وی ار فالوئنگ دا پٹ سٹیپ اف ابراہیم علیہ السلام سننا واٹ ایور از دیر دیٹ از دا ابراہیم علیہ السلام از لائک 5000 ایئرز اگو وین ابراہیم علیہ السلام بلد دا ہاؤس اف اللہ سبحانہ تعالی اللہ گیو ہم اور انسٹرکشن اینڈ ہی دیر از اونلی اسماعیل اینڈ ابراہیم علیہ السلام اینڈ اللہ سیڈ لائک گو اینڈ کال دا اذان فار دا حج اینڈ کال دا پیپل دین ابراہیم علیہ السلام سیڈ دیر از نو ون یا اللہ ان دا ویل ان دس بیرن ویلی who is going to listen to me allah said your uh, job is to do the azan of hajj or proclaim and the sound and you know what my job is this like i have to pick my guests from the thousands of miles away and bring them here and look at us like from the corners of world allah subhanahu wa ta'ala picking their guests and we are going towards there and saying labbaik allahumma labbaik and that the sound of the azan of the ibrahim alayhi salam is still echo into the air once you will be standing in the land of our for the first time you will feel like this there is a some connection between you and the arfa between you and that mountain of the the arfa there is a some connection you will feel that connection and every ruh every soul in the in the mountain and the grounds of arfa they will feel the same thing but the only way the people cannot explain it what they feel it and that is the call of ibrahim alayhi salam our father ibrahim alayhi salam 5000 years ago here you are standing after the 5000 years ago that is the same place um, where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once created all of our souls and ruh i uh, i learned this in the one of the yasaqazi's lecture and he said like be all present allah call all of us on the jabal arfat and allah said like who's your rab and we all proclaim our rab is allah So once we will go there, that was the day of our Ruh being created and the day of our birthdays. So we all connected somewhere, somehow with each another. No matter we are Muslim, non-Muslim, but that was the same place that all the Ruh has been present and we proclaim our Rab is Allah, our Rab is this. So you know what? That the ground of Arafah has some special spiritual connection between all the Hujjahs. So here we go, the mountain of uh, Marwa. Uh, yeah and here we you ended up so there is no like um i didn't find anything sufficient for this like saying like you must have to read the two rakat here or there or doing the send that uh, mm-hmm. the or something just make a dua and just exit the um, yeah yeah that's the dua and but to some people are doing the namaz over there Then, yeah some people are praying over there doing the nafil ibadat over there it would be so crowded don't try to do this because that was the time it, it is just the same the people make dua and turn yes yeah, yeah. just the people make, make dua and turn some people, people are doing dua. start doing cutting their hair over there over there don't don't do, do this and make sure once you are cut off your hair your partner has to be get off from the ihram so they already shaved their head if your husband is cutting your hair or if some other lady that lady shouldn't be in that state of ihram in a ihram you cannot cut your hair first somebody has to cut your hair then you have to be out of the ihram and then the other lady and you can check the 50 point from the video of yasir qazi and umar sulaiman what no, so basically what you're saying is that husbands go shave their head off right yeah. their hair is off now they're done now they can be out of ihram you cannot cut by yourself You can, yeah, you cannot cut your hair by yourself. Somebody out of ihram has to And for example, hair. you are in a ihram, mm-hmm. your hair are not done. And I said, someone, can you cut mine? You cannot cut mine until you will be out from the ihram. Somebody cut yours. Yeah, but out of ihram, she doesn't mean that right away. Yeah, right yeah, away yeah. Take off your clothes. That's what I'm trying to clear up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She doesn't mean right away, oh, your husband's wearing his towel and he, he shaved his off. Oh, well, I have to change my clothes and I'm going to cut your hair. <laughs> no, no, no. out of ihram the condition of ihram. the condition of ihram so the condition of ihram is done once he shaved his head off he's out of the condition of ihram he can do your hair and once you're done then you can do the other sisters and blah 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 okay don't you cannot cut your own so hair. these are the duas for the sapan marwa so i'm sure like you most of you are memorize these duas these are the small duas so i, I would recommend you to memorize this dua because mm-hmm. you have to recite it so many times okay so and here's the translation and some other stuff for this this is a ground of arfa look like the mountain of arfa which we didn't go to the mountain of arfa no we many don't. people go you to umrah yeah you don't need to this this is not necessary you have to climb up the mountain that's your own personal opinion like if you want to because it's super hot 
this was super hard you have to be think about your health condition each and everything it's good to go if you want to go but it doesn't okay. mention in any of the hadith of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you have to climb the mountain there are many people who went it's a they walked, land of yeah, they went they walked half an hour they climbed the mountain i guess they want to get the feel that's fine and some of those people had the energy to come back and keep on making dua And, and many, some of them get really tired. And yes, and many people who went walked half an hour in the heat to there. And, and uh, you can, and then they returned back, and they were done, and they were so uh, they were so dehydrated and so down. They went to sleep. Arafah is it's the land of Arafah. Okay, it's all the Arafah. over the land is called the land of Arafah. Yes, uh, I don't. I didn't see who asked. Yes, you can read the dua. I, yes, yes, I, yes, yeah, yes. yeah. Of course, you can read the dua. You don't have to have it memorized. What Asia means is so you don't have to keep on taking out your book again and again. But honestly, I had we both had our phones, right? Yeah. I uh for me I I took out my phone each time uh to and you know what since stuff, I'm done making the my yeah. dua book so I um make a one folder in my phone and open my book like this and take a picture start taking a picture of all my book and then I keep it safe in my phone sometimes I read it with my phone sometimes because I don't want to drain out my battery so sometimes I was reading with this and you know what before the help we read it so many times so we will memorize all of this I'm just telling I just no. get back. Congratulations, Mubarak. Umra Mubarak. So, I uh, on the land of Arafa, like what was the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to recite the dua, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There is the that. Let me share this first, okay, okay. and then the dua. So that's how the camp of Ar Arafa looked like, or tents of Arafa looked like. I am not able to find any single picture of ours. So that is able, like this. These are the all, and that is the luxurious camp. Our uh, our tent and camps are inside more than this, more than this. Look at this, someone. Is it more than this? We have like what now inside, like the bedding and this and that. This is Arafa. Yeah, this is. Arafa. Oh, okay. Yeah, we had we had soft beds. Yeah. Yeah, we have soft beds, so many chillers and coolers and the air conditioning system and so much stuff inside the camps. So the um, I am not able to find like the luxurious picture, even though that what we found it at the on the day of Arafa. You know, the reason we're not able to find pictures, honestly, we weren't trying to take pictures yeah. with our phones. Yeah. Why can't it? We have one or two. So you know what? Just keep it these sight in your mind. Something like this will be your camp. Inshallah, may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala bless you better than us what we have. So, but keep this in your mind. So this is a dua with Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recite as many time as uh, as possible. Like mm -hmm. La ilaha illallah wa Ahdahu la sharika lahu la almulku wa la hamdu wa huwa la kulli shayin. I'm used to it. That's okay. <laughs> So what what we have to say with this dua? Um, okay, so this dua uh, go back go back to the Arabic. La la la. La la la. Huwa la This dua has many lectures, many 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 lectures. Uh, this basically read the meaning. There's none worthy of worship other than Allah alone. Uh, alone, not having any partner to Him belongs dominion, and to Him is all praise, and He is all capable over everything. This line, He is all capable of over everything. You are sleepy. Read this dua with and with the thought in mind that you uh, the your sleep is going to go away. You can't sleep. Read this dua and with the thought in mind that Ya Allah make my sleep easy. Read this dua. Okay, you are um struggling to stay uh, uh for energy during Arafah. Make this dua. This is a very important zikr. That's what it is, and this is very important zikr. This zikr has many benefits. Mm -hmm. Basically. Uh, when you're saying that he Allah is capable over everything, then you keep on saying this zikr anytime you're struggling because he is capable or, uh, over everything. You're struggling to breathe. You're struggling to open your eyes. Even you're struggling to sleep. Marketplace, no? Yeah, yeah. Even when you're going to the marketplace, even today, online. or you're shopping online for Hajj, or when you're doing your, uh, I was reading, I believe Saira was talking about biometrics. Any, anything, anything you're struggling with, read, read this. Dua. Read Make this. it a habit. There's a full lecture on it. Uh, uh, there's multiple lectures multiple on it. Lectures. Multiple, multiple lectures on it. And read this because you again and again you're saying, Ya Allah, you're capable over everything. Help, just please do this for me. Guide me through this. Help me do this. Make it happen for me. So this this dikr is very very beneficial and very very powerful in the scale of mizan. Yeah. And that was a dua um, which like a prophet Muhammad Sallam used to recite so many times in the day of Arafah. And plus you are able to ask your own duas, but in between middle with this duas and zikr and askar of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Always, always, inshallah. 
So, and uh, make the habit of reciting this dua every morning by yourself and uh, uh, teach this dua to your kids and make the habit once they are leaving the house, they will also recite this dua. Yeah. Once you will make the habit, so inshallah, you will be able to like do it as, as many, recite it as many times as you will be able to. So, In fact, after... After Fajr and uh, I have to remember the scholar. I can't remember who. Umar Tolan, I think someone. Because you send me. I uh, which scholar it was that? We listened to so many. But uh, there was uh, after Fajr and after you Maghrib. Know, if you should read this 10 times, uh, you know, for um, Allah's guidance towards success over everything. Right. So I can't remember. Umar Suleiman's lecture yeah, I, was I, very long for very this. Long, very long. Very long. And on this particular slide. On this particular yes. zikr. Yeah. Yes. So here I add the sun asnat. So this is a dua. Can you teach? This one me. Uh, Subhanallah. Yeah. 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 It was Javiri Rati Allah. Yeah. Yeah. When she was sitting. So the Pro when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went for Fajr Salah. He came back and he saw his wife sitting still. Um. And she had been sitting, and he came back much later on, right? Like after Salah ended, and then Zuhar, uh, much later on, yeah. Hmm. So he came back and he says, You know, um, have you been sitting like this? And she said, Yes. And he said, She said, I was just making dua, I was praising Allah. So he saw, he said, He, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, told his wife, um, four words that what if, what if I tell you a, a, a zikr that will uh, basically what wait. That weighs more than everything, any other dua you make or any other you zikr. You just have to recite it three times, which is equal to you have been doing the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a whole day. Just so, repeat it by your yeah, And just keep on reciting it, right? No, it's not even like even more than three, four, go for it, right? And it's very easy to remember. If you remember the meaning, you'll remember. Uh, it has a very beautiful meaning. Again, subhanallah wa bihamdi adada khalqi wa rida nafsi wa zina ta or shiwa midada kalimati. Yeah, so you, the meaning, meaning is very beautiful. Glory be to Allah, praise to him. By multitude of his creation, yeah. all right, uh, and his pleasure by his pleasure by the weight of his throne and by the extent of his words, the meaning is very very beautiful. And this is a very important zikr. So keep on reading it. Keep on reading and remember these. You will I add the one of the link uh, here, like the I I believe some of the scholars, so you can click and read more about this dua. We we are not sharing anything that is that has not been. Um, cited or credited to a scholar like we made sure this is we found it through Sahih yeah. Muslim right yeah so that's why uh, we don't want to share anything that doesn't have so this is a, um, a powerful astakbar too many of you already know this and if you are not that's fine like you can use the any word so I I really like it because of the meaning of this mm -hmm. so if you want it so you can also read this astakbar and even though this is another beautiful astakbar which has a very beautiful mm -hmm. meaning Yes, so you can get a look at any of these. So here the Dua Kunud, which we used to recite it in the namaz. Uh, in, uh, so Dua Kunud could be recited even outside of Vitra during yeah. any calamity. It's a beautiful dua. Any calamity, any time. Right? It's not just, oh, it's not only for Vitra. So this is a beautiful Dua, which is a habit of ours, like to read it every single day. So if you want to be make this Dua in your Dua book, it has like a very beautiful meaning. Oh Allah, mm -hmm. I ask you to for the beneficial knowledge, good provision, and accepting the deeds. Okay, so uh, I just want to add to that. Allahumma inni as'aluka. As'aluka. Allahumma inni as'aluka. You can say husnul khatima. Beautiful end mm -hmm. to my life. Um, Allah, um, Allahumma inni husnul sabr. Beautiful patience. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, I know I don't have beautiful, yeah, yeah. beautiful patience for sure. <laughs> But husnul khatima, husnul sabr, you can keep on adding to it. Allahumma inni asaluka ilman um, ilman nafi'an wa rizqan tayyiban wa amalan mutaqabbalan. Right, mutaqabbalan. So it's, um, it, you can keep on adding to it. If you speak Arabic, obviously it's easier. Or if, if you are not able to, just read this much. And you can say shifa'in, right? For health. Allahumma inni asaluka shifa'in for your health. So you can add to these, but this is a very, very good uh, dua. Your kids should know it too. It's I tell my kids to read it each time when they're going to school. So they're this is them also out. like, this is a dua which we found it like uh, years back and we make sure like our kids also recite this dua. Rabbana lakan hamd once we are doing the takbirat and the namaz hamdan kaseeran tayyiban mubarakan yeah. yeah. so, so what happened when the Prophet Muhammad says, um, one time he was leading the prayer and um, the sahabi recite this after this. Rabbana lakan hamd hamdan kaseeran tayyiban mubarakan and Prophet Muhammad yeah. asked like who recite this so none of them replied like because they thought like maybe something wrong and then he asked again 
Then the man replied, like, I did it. Then the Prophet Muhammad said, like, I saw like 30 angels came down and they wants to write the ajar of this dua and they are not able to. This much heavy is this dua. So why not like start editing this dua into your namaz so or each time prayers? Each time when you're coming up, so before you have it and then yeah, yeah you can and then your, right? all those all those angels so, behind you yeah and inshallah before uh, landing to the makkah you will if you will edit these small things to make your salah more better so why not inshallah and you will get the ajar for that and this is a dua between two salah very it's this is a very nice dua um, um alhamdulillah yeah it's very easy to remember look at the meaning between you between the, the words too yeah yeah, yeah 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 between sajuds right so it says Allahumma gfir li warhamni wahdini so warhamni comes from Rahman so your mercy you know and you can uh, oh do, do you don't have the dua okay yeah. have Very mercy well. yeah guide me support me protect me provide me elevate me many people twist and turn here there you the can, wording yeah, you, of dua you can you can have mercy afterwards you can have guide me before the thing is again we don't speak Arabic me and Asi don't yeah. speak Arabic, so we memorize it the way it's there and that's but, how our sajood going to be little slower down which will be like this and like an exercise yeah time. so when you go for sajood right you go you, you're reading and you get up and then you then go you back to... down right so what what happens this dua when you read it in the middle it slows you down. Yes. Like the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes it. So I would suggest you like uh, read memorize. Read the dua it. between your prostration. Yeah, read yes. the dua between your So again, this is the one again. This is the way famous dua of the Prophet Muhammad system. He used to recite right. multiple times. All the time. So make this dua in make the this dua in your list of your dua. So this dua when we were writing to Medina, um, I just kept on... I just, I was, I'm not a loud reciter. I have a very blank face when I don't want to show expression. So I was just, I was, you know, I'm just thinking to myself, you know, I would be, I was talking while everybody was talking, but during that time, I just kept thinking, you know why? I was just so worried that I'm going to go back to, back into this world and I'm going to not yeah. focus on Salah, not focus on my Ibadah. That was my worry when we were driving to Medina, because I knew it, it has come to an end. It's yes. three days. It'll pass by really quickly. And I was already worried. Um, and so I this I kept on reading this dua. I was like, <laughs> and Prophet Muhammad mm -hmm. used to recite this dua so many times. And there's multiple lecture about the be beauty of this, this dua. dua. Very beautiful. You teach your kids too, guys. Yeah. Yeah. So that is the dua, which is like a saver from so many places. This one. <laughs> she used the dua. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. This is Musa Alayhi Salam's dua, right? Uh, yeah, I don't remember. remember. But I got it. Yeah, this is Musa Alayhi Salam's dua. Yeah. Um, so you see it in the Quran, obviously, the, it says it right there. Uh, you see the miracle of this dua so many times in Haram. Once we are stuck in the You cloud, will not believe. Yes. How many times this, this dua, dua helped us? Yes, so many times. You know, we were just there and we are like, and because we're just right now, we're like, okay, even now, like, you know, just we have tried everything we believe in allah and now we're making dua if it doesn't happen then it's allah's will this was better for us but if yes. it does happen but it's worked like a miracle over there once i was going down to be towards to the matav and it's jam-packed and there's a policeman everywhere and it's like no 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 space no space and like they were pushing you back even though saying in arabic and i was reciting this dua and suddenly the space opened and some it looked like a some angel holding your hand and Pushing you forward yeah, towards yeah. the where you are once you where you wants to be set and you are in front of the mataf in front of the Kaaba gate and uh, like finding it finding a taxi driver because <laughs> yeah, Makkah, let me tell you, driver, I read the taxi one. drivers are going to char overcharge you oh yes. uh, this is completely on the side it's not dua definitely bargain be like no yeah hey, uh, ashra re ashra real ten reals that's it ten reals from your hotel to Makkah ho ho hoping that you're just an hour's walk away an hour walk away. It should not charge you more than 10 real. Be like, no, 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 10, 10, 10. When you're coming from Jamarat back to Haram, so from stoning, when you're going to Haram, the buses are overcharging yes. you like Because crazy. that was the day, day of Eid for them. They know everybody wants to go back, right? Yes. So but this dua help us with the pure heart Keep on reading dua. this dua and find taxi drivers who will not charge you more than even a uh, This dua will help you, inshallah. Make this dua. And once you are stuck in some calamity and musibah, just read the Inna lillahi wa inna ilahi rajun. Allah ma journey ki musibata akhlafli khairum minha, which will be, uh, which will be in later on. And this is the few duas which we used to recite every single day and work it. So I add this in for our knowledge. Yeah. 
And I'll not, again, this is the same dua, sorry. This is a dua, you, you all know about this dua and the beauty of this dua. Yeah. So, so as many prophets dua out there, it's really hard to remember. Powerful dua. Sorry. Powerful dua, yeah. Um, do you have the Allah? Yeah, yeah, there is, here is going to be come up. This is a dua of Yunus Allah Salam. If Yunus Allah Salam didn't ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala this manner, he will be staying in the inside the stomach of the whale for many more years. Nobody knows how many. So Allah mentioned this in the tafsir. Uh, once you read the tafsir of the the surah and this dua, you will be get like more summarized and more descriptively. So the here is a dua of the Lut al Salam, and you know what what climate he is facing uh, the Kame Lut. Like and now today's we are standing in the same society again. We want to protect our kids from all of these bad things. So may read this dua while you're making dua for your kids and yes. yourself. Yes, yes. So this is a dua, the dua of uh, when Ibrahim al Salam making building the Kaaba between Ismail al Salam. Rabbana taqabbala minna inna kanta samiul alim. So this is a dua for your family. So you, you should recite this every single day. This is a beautiful dua for your parents. These all are the very small duas and very, very um, meaningful. This is, yeah. this is also, this is a dua I already described you. Allah matani jannatul three times. What will happen? Allah majorni min nar three times. What will happen? Allah minna kafuun tuhibul kafuun. This is also very very powerful. Print them and if you can, if you can. Yeah, I have a, like a word file where I put all of them in a small size together oh, last okay. night to print them. So I made it like a this type of the size. So you will be able to print them and just cut it and paste it in your book. This is our Rabbi Auzaini Ajna Shukran Imatulati. In the beginning, I told you about this dua. This is the du beautiful dua of Hazrat Asiya Razila Tala and her Rabbi Bibli in the Kabait of the Jannat. She is asking the uh, she is asking the house from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, not the, just the house or palace in the Jannah, beside Allah Subhanahu. He's asking for a house beside Allah Subhanahu. Beside Allah Subhanahu. Again, this is the same dua. Oh, you put it on. I didn't know that. Yeah, Inna Lillahi wa Inna which I said like this dua help us like. So many times. And this is a any time. So this is not only for Hajj. This is any time you're facing a tough time. You make this dua and Allah will compensate you for better with it. You make this dua, Allah will compensate you better. You make this dua, Allah will compensate you better. Keep on making this dua. Allah will make compensate you for better. For better, because that dua, like the story of that dua, let me show you, because that was a very beautiful story once I was teaching this dua to my kids and other kids. So um, I don't remember the exactly wording of the hadith, but the, I can summarize in my own words. When the Abu Salma and the Umm Salma, each another love each, each another so so much and all the Sahaba will know about their love. love like, yeah, they were really they were really famous couple. So Abu Salma got injured in some of the war and the, the wound wouldn't heal up once he returned back to the Makkah. So one day Abu Salma asked, um, um, asked the Umm Salma, if I get die, you get married to other person. Then Umm Salma said, you know what, if I got die, like if I passed away, you don't get to marry. Because that much uh, Gaira and that much uh, uh, love she wants to be her, from her husband, she don't want to be shared to anyone. Then um, uh, Abu Salma said, like, I learned this to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi today. And she, uh, and uh, he teach her the dua. He basically, basically dua was so that Allah he, will compensate with your loss the better. If I am gone, when I am gone, when I die, because he knew he was coming, yes. he's dying, right? When I am die, when I die, Allah will give you some, mm, something better. And so she did. She, she just taught this dua to Umm Salma, and Umm Salma is later on explaining where she uh, she said when Abu Salma passed away, I didn't remember anything rather than only this dua. This dua. And after Abu Salma passed away, her idda will be open. That was not the time when the woman used to be do the hijab. So uh, Abu Bakr asked for her hand because that was the custom. The woman shouldn't left alone. Then uh, she re she refused it. Then uh, um, Umar, Umar Razi also asked for, asked her, for her hand and she refused it. And one day Prophet Muhammad came to her house and he asked for her hand. And then she said like, 
Um, and she doesn't say, I accept you. She said like, I have three conditions. I don't remember the one, but one, she said like, I have the kids. Then the Prophet Muhammad son replied like, I, they are my kids. If you are kids, then they are my kids. Then she said like, uh, I, I am the woman who feels so jealous to the other because you have the other wives. Then Prophet Muhammad son said like, I'll, I'll ask dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the dua and it will be gone. And then she said like, uh, I am in not the age where I will be young for a long time. Then the Prophet Muhammad says, and this illness is also with me too. And we laugh and they got married. And there's so many wisdom full stories with the uh, Umm Salma later on. We will mm. learn. But I, I, am, I could be wrong, but I think in the story, first she refuses him and then he asks again. She didn't refuse. She put like the conditions. The conditions. Okay. And that was a beautiful like a story. Once you will. Um, yeah. I, I, I it's a very beautiful story. Yeah. 100% believe the mothers of the believer, the lecture of the uh, Yasir Qazi. And there is like another lecture of uh, um, about the mother of believer, Umm Salma. And over there, you will be fine like the, this whole story. This whole story is a very popular story. Yeah. So this dua is. And like, this is for all you moms who are looking for who or who will in the future look for uh, spouses for your kids remember yeah. even uh, don't don't ask for tiny things ask for everything in detail you know your child ask for a spouse accordingly yeah i add the window link here. not not that know. oh he makes enough money or she cooks enough good food or she makes enough money or blah blah, blah. no not that basic stuff ask everything in detail okay these are the some other duas that we should recite it and you, you guys are going to have to go through the slides and look yeah. at all the duas. But these are all duas that, you know what? It makes it just makes it easier. You remember how, um, like you remember how to, like we will ask in our language, but when you know it in Arabic, it just makes it even more beautiful. Yeah. This is also a very beautiful dua. You can, um, even though me and someone memorize this dua and we read this according to the time of the Hajj so many yeah. times. Wherever we started, so Allah make it easy and end it up easily. So there is like, you, once you will go to the slide, there's so much uh, like the meaning of the Sakhar, why we have to read the Sakhar. Bismillah, this is a very beautiful and powerful weapon for the Muslims. So read about the more in the links. Uh, why? These, these are the scars which Prophet Muhammad Sassam used to recite morning and evening. So we should recite it. What is the best place to recite these Sakhar more focused harem or Masjid al -Nabri. So Aydil Kursi, the power of Aydil Kursi, you all know about it. So I just put it over there, whatever the was. And the reason we're telling you so many askar and zikr is in case, in case, cross your fingers, but in case you do get your period a little bit and you you do, you don't know, you can't read or you can't do ghusl, you're thinking, I'm going to go to my hotel and do ghusl before whatever. You have the zikr, right? Yeah. You have the zikr to do it. Uh, you can still make you up. And, um, and even when you're going to sleep, read, you know, surah nas, surah khlas, yeah, reading. this is a beautiful dua of the Prophet Muhammad Sassam when he made this dua in the time of the Paif. And you will all know what will happen, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him in the time of the Paif, like the journey of the Stravel Mirage and so much. So this is the, uh, I really love personally this dua and I know this is a very hard wording. So I add the YouTube link over there and there's a translation of this dua. It's just like a very, very, uh, I really like this dua. I don't know why. So if you are able to do recite it, then add it to into the. And if the wording is not clear for you, then you can yeah do yeah, it. You can look at the YouTube link in the. Slide. So this is a dua. I love this yes. dua. This I really like this dua. I because of the translation. This this because of the translation. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I love it. I love it. I love the last line. Do not leave me but to myself, even for the blink of an eye. Read this, and so I we got this from a Mufti main clip. Sure yes, and, and his lecture is the Mubarak. May yeah. Allah bless all these scholars. They were very good. The lecture. Um, yeah. So the link is there. Uh, and this dua is read it in the morning, read it in the evening. So no matter of yours is left completely to yourself, even for the blink of an eye, because Allah is there. Inshallah. If it happens the way you like it, Alhamdulillah. If it doesn't, understand that this is the way that Allah wanted it. If at any time you're tested during Hajj. Whether it's through an injury, whether it's through pain, whether it's th through somebody saying something rude or mean or whatever, just don't think that, you know, like, oh, what is this person doing? Think of it this way, that Allah has brought you to this point where you're facing whatever you're facing is because Allah wants you to overcome some part of yourself. Allah wants you to overcome some habit of yours. Allah is testing you and Allah wants that improvement to come in. So go through it, okay? And keep on reading this. Memorize this. This, memorize. Ya hayu, ya memorize this. 
And if you will remember the meaning, if you will, if you remember the meaning, you will remember the Arabic. Share the for the visiting the grave because once you are in the Masjid al Nabi, so you will visit the so many times you will pass by the um, Jannatul Baqi, the grave. And this is the dua, it has been written outside the Jannatul Baqi. So recite this dua as many times as possible once whenever you're passing by the Jannatul Baqi, the grave. And here is the mannerism of how you, you should visit the graves. So I add the slide. So also these are the few duas for the deceased person. You can add your um, any family member, your grandparents, your parents for asking the dua and their parents from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that person. These are the kalmat which are heavy in the scale. These are the, again the beautiful dua for your spring, health and family. All the duas are very small and very tiny. And here I add the duas which we um, find it like a more efficient to way to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a more appropriate manner. So you can uh, copy these duas into your uh, into your book. You know what? What I I did it. Let me show you. I make I print the dua, the whole dua, and I put it like this. You folded it. I folded it the paper. I fold the paper and I put it here. Here you go. The whole A4 size paper inside the book, and I folded it. Do not try to write it because it took your lots of time. So I folded it in here. So um, once I was making a start bringing my dua book, there are so many pages left. And after that, like I did this, so many people text me with their name. I print their all duas and put it like this, all the messages in there. So, um, you know, you're going to start making your dua book now. Carry it with you everywhere. Literally, yes. when I start making it, I would carry it. Like if my husband's driving and I'm not the one driving, I would keep it with me. Why? Because in the car, I don't know, something would happen or something or mm -hmm. the other would remind me and I would open my book. And, and even though after that, like we can use this in so many times and alhamdulillah, we yeah, are use able it to be capable. Um, and this is like a more, we never found out like ourselves, even though I asked my parents, like, did you ever make this, these to us? And they said like, no, why would I make it? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the best for you. It's like, you are, you should ask us all the things. No, not just the best. Don't just say the best. Whatever. I, I want, detail, detail, you know. So um, carry this dua. Take it up with you when you're going to bed at night, just because you're sitting there. Keep a pen. Especially in the days of the Ramadan. And write it down. Nights of the Ramadan. Sorry. Just keep on writing it down, writing it down, writing it down. Right? Like right now, when you, all of the all those of you who are preparing to go to Hajj, keep this book with you at all time with a pen. Believe it or not, you're gonna go through things, you're gonna be like, you know, like something as simple as, Oh, I can't afford this. Make this dua. Ya Allah, make me capable of affording this. Make my kids all capable of affording so and so. You know, like it just if you have a pen with you, you'll write it down. You won't even believe how quickly I use up. the pencil. Then I can like be more, but pen is the more efficient way. So there, here we go. The dua for parenting a child, and we try to put as much as possible. And of course, you can add more and yeah, yeah, yeah share with course. us. Share yes, with us when yes, you add yes. more because our kids are small. So if those of you have older kids, please guide us. Yes, so you can copy into the word. And here the dua, uh, I said like, Allahumma fattahli abwaba bi rahmatika, bi khairika, bi salamatika, bi sahatika, neemati, barkati, like so many others. So this translation is in Urdu. Yeah, Urdu, sorry. So those of who you don't speak Urdu or do can't read Urdu, I'm one of those people. Um, I, I am not able to find this in an English. She, yeah, she called this off, uh, she called this from Urdu. But if you read read the book, you'd see abwaba, abwaba al khair. Door of khair, awab salam, door of salam, like peace. You know, so um, uh, it's kuwati, yeah, it's uh, basically, energy. Yeah, Allah, you know, open the door of all these good things. As many us. as words you remember, just say that much. So if you can't, um, because I I don't know how to read Urdu, so but I understood the Arabic part of it, hmm. and so I I read the Arabic. Yeah. And these are the duas only for the people who know the Urdu because that the other one is so the only if the person doesn't know in the English, uh, not the sorry, Urdu. So they can go with the English duas. And these are the Urdu duas for the people that just just I found out like these are the beautiful wording of the duas. Maybe these, can are, also these are all repetitions yeah. of duas that she's already yeah, posted yeah. in English. Yeah. So for the French slide, I'm going to remove these in yeah, Urdu, yeah. so you, you guys don't get confused, to. right? Yeah, you don't. Need it's to. just for people who speak Urdu and can they can read Urdu. It helps them word it better. Okay. Yes. For those who speak French or who anybody who does not, um, I mean, if you only speak English, ignore the Urdu ones. But it's basically the repetitions of the duas that she's already posted in English. Okay. This is the Jamarat and the Rami area. Just I add the two slides for this. 
this much as jam pack is going to be once you are walking towards the jamarat but don't get scared inshallah you will be able to do it because every year thousands of hajjaj goes and they will be able to do it before that the time like people going to stop each another but now it's not because they designed the jamarat really goodly yeah, and they design in a way that you go from one place and you come out before it was just going and coming in so from the same colors. place yeah but now it's you go from one end and you come out the other end and please, please, um, there's a tip in Umar Suleiman's lecture about yeah, Jamarat. Added. You added it? Okay. This is a comment. About, about Jamarat, uh, when you're going there, he gives a tiny tip about where to do stoning from. People enter, they see the, the shaitani pillars, and they right away go throw stones. There's no space. It can hit you. Somebody can hit you. Go around to an area where there's nobody, and you be tried and tested and nobody was yes. there each time because yes. everybody goes directly into it no one walks around a, a little tiny bit more just walk yes. around a tiny bit more nobody there you're going to be able to easily throw so the them. people who are from the almost sim camp uh, from the canada they need to walk through these tunnels once they are going for the jamarat this is another way we used to go with these tunnels and we still remember it's so hot and you can see the mountain and you can see the one heat. rays are coming one way is outing you can see the heat you can you can like look at it it feels so rough looking at it right now right it so is. the hat the fan the water uh, the to spray yourself and to electrolytes bring, electrolytes please okay these are the tunnel from the inside there is a fan but the ones the so many people are walking so of course like it's heat up and plus the heat of the day and alhamdulillah i guess we were complaining about heat may allah bless those russians Oh yeah, Russians who live in extreme cold weather. Very strong people. Not only very strong, they were reciting duas out loud so everybody else can recite it. And not only that, their women were covered like this. Yeah, like complete. Look and, at their iman, the power of their And iman. I'm looking at them, I'm like, Ya Allah, they come from such cold weather. How are they covered like this? And here I, you know, I mean, I'm come from Canada. Yes, it's cold, Russia is colder. And I'm just like thinking, oh my God, like, I, and look, I, when I saw them, when we, when we saw them, we were like, Okay, like no zip up. No, yes. Don't complain about the heat. Just go. <laughs> yeah. So just prepare for that uh, for the worst, and then inshallah you will feel easy. There's a I cut that lecture into that part until like you need to really really listen how you gonna enter into the jamarat, the one we are talking about, and how you gonna exit the jamarat, and how easy is it, and where you gonna collect your stones, and where you shouldn't collect your stones. Okay. So we don't have to go through with all of these 50 points, but inshallah, you will to find these. And, and what you read while you're doing the program. Right? Yes. What you say. Uh, what yes. You say. It's all in there. Listen and to their lectures. Like, yeah, yeah, lecture. yeah, yeah. the Qazi lecture is also about this. Listen to the, the lectures from these scholars. They're really detailed. They're really helpful. How, how do gonna, I'm going to stop this. It's done, I think. It's done? Okay. Well, this is uh, 106 slides. Alhamdulillah. We are able to do it. Alhamdulillah. So again, the spider she prepared all the slides. <laughs> alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So um, yeah, inshallah, inshallah. We really, really hope everything goes beyond easy and beyond smooth for you guys. From the bottom of our heart, we really, really pray. Inshallah, may Allah make it easy See, for you um, guys. Um, may Allah make um, it. Uh, you sufficient for you guys and may Allah keep you away from all sorts of distraction. Amen. Remember anytime you're getting upset or anything or even between spouses. Biggest test out there is the spouse, by the way. <laughs> but even between spouses, remember the shaitan is out there. Just because you're a hajj doesn't mean shaitan is not there. Shaitan is very much there. In fact, shaitan is at full force at this point. Okay. Yes. So please, 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 please be, be patient. Be, be patient. patient. And be patient. just zip up for the 20 days. Your mouth. Like everything inshallah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um make everything easy as someone said like we are not the scholar if anything we did it say it mistakenly may, may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and you guys also forgive us so we try best ever to compile all the lectures and all of our little very very tiny knowledge together to give you the best experience of all the all the time of the hajj and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make these videos beneficial for all other hujjaj. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala call us again for the hajj and umrah. We will be able to be a part of uh, the hostings of the guest of Allah inshallah. subhanahu wa ta'ala again, inshallah. And uh, may yeah. Allah accept this from us. Ameen. 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 Yeah, yeah. And jazakallah to all those who attended. And make special dua for all those who helped us when we were going. Many, yes. many other previous hujjaj gave us many, many tips. Yes. 
So, and don't forget to make lots of dua for ourselves wherever you are adding yourself in the slides of the seven things. Add us in a little bit of the tiny, tiny line. Me and Saman. Yeah. Thank the, you so much, Saman okay. and Asia. Jazakallah for holding up this session. It was so informative. And I don't know why, but I like, you know, if you guys can keep doing it, like, you know, after Hajj, I would like to join your company uh, through online sessions. Thank you so much, Jazakallah, for that. I know it's okay, not I'm easy not. for us women, you know, we have our kids, children and other stuff, but you guys are taking our time from your busy schedule. And I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank Jazakallah. You. Jazakallah. Jazakallah. And remember, you're having, you're going to be taking tablets. A little tip, I guess we didn't do that. Tell your husbands beforehand, before going to Hajj, you know, I have, if you, if you're taking the tablet, for those of you who aren't, that's fine. But if you're taking the tablet, be like, you know, I'm going to be taking this tablet I or I have to, or whatever, and it will make me a bit impatient. So just be patient with me. Okay. Yes. So give, fair warning up ahead. <laughs> Thank you so much, Faiza. Thank you so much for all the duas. May Allah subhanahu wa yeah. ta'ala beneficial for all of you. Thank you so much for joining. Anybody who missed the first half, or anybody who missed the second half, the slide is very self-explanatory. You will be Someone fine. saying something. Sorry, go ahead. I just wanted to thank you and I wanted to ask you to make dua for me. I have made the intention. I'm taking time off, but I still haven't been able to book. So I'm trying to go through the uh, route through the Pakistani passport, but still getting re getting renewed please make dua that i go for hajj inshallah inshallah may allah subhanahu make it easy make it make you among his guests inshallah Amin. inshallah Amin. Amin. so any more questions? um i have a, i have a question as well yeah uh first of all thank you so much much this was very informative may allah Ta'ala reward you for this effort um yes. and just wanted to know, like, uh, if we are going in groups and um, I'm going in another group and my parents are going in another group, will we be able to meet each other and yes. try to stick together? Not a stick, but what do you be able what to. do you mean by other groups? Are you going? Are you going from North America? Yeah, I'm going from Canada. Okay. Um, I live in Toronto, um, okay. so I've joined. Um, uh, we have to go through an agent, right? Through a group yeah. group uh, of people. Okay. So my mom. Uh, got another group and um, I got another group. So from how Canada or be... from some other country? From Canada. Itself. Yeah, you from Canada. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the thing is, if you're going from Canada, you're not actually assigned groups. You're assigned the package. Um, oh, and... yeah, sorry. I meant the... Yeah, yeah, you're right. right. Yeah. Yeah. So package, um, yeah. you're assigned package and obviously in her package, it may be a different hotel and your package might be a different hotel. But I don't know. camps should be the same. for the Most board. probably the yeah. Mina camps will be the same. But if they aren't, I think you can go and just like uh, ask the, them. The, the thing with Mina camp is you will be able to be each other, be with, with each other in Arafat and Mina and Muzalfa if you wish. Um, and the, basically, the thing is when you come to Mina, your bus takes you exactly to your hotel. I don't know if you're your mom, your and your mom's hotel is the same. Uh, but mm -hmm. if it isn't, you will be, yes, of course, you know, tell her to meet you at this point in Haram. And, okay. and for the praying in the haram, you will always meet each another. Keep yes. or, or phones, right? Yeah, Remember, you have to have your phones, right? So yeah. get Saudi yeah. sim. Must, must get, get Saudi, Saudi sim, sim and meet each other in haram. And in Mina, even if you're not in the same room, you'll be in the same camp. Yes, the okay? camp area would be. So same. you can be like, oh, okay, you're in this room, you're in this room, because the rooms are divided by hotel names. And you know what? Sometimes people okay. give them this flexibility to be together more. Yeah. yeah you, if you go talk to somebody, be like, hey, is it okay if you go in the other camp? Or, it depends. Maybe, yes. maybe not, right? Yeah. But it's like you you see the tiny, 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 tiny white huts on top. Uh, these are a bunch of white. It's one huge camp with basically tiny, 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 tiny rooms. Yeah. So, well, not tiny, but tiny as in like 100 people are sleeping in there. So the rooms are divided by room uh, by hotel names. You don't have to go outside of the camp. You could just be like walking on inside the camp and be like, "Oh, where's your? What's your? You will be able to see the hotel's name listed on side uh, on top of on the outside uh, on top of the curtains of the of the, room, camp. Of the mina rooms. Yeah. yeah. Faiza really asked fun. me about the Pakistani stuff. Like Faiza, yeah, my uh, mother-in-law and father-in-law also traveling for the Hajj via Pakistan from Canada. They are not going to the Pakistan. So if you can call me later on uh, in the day or in a, in a night time, so I can give you more information regarding this. Any other question? 
I think everyone is done. <laughs> All right, people. Uh, about the luggage, do we take a separate one? Yes, yes. One for your husband, one for one yourself. For you. Because Must. most probably, I, may Allah make it easy for you guys. I don't know how it's going to be this year. But last year, even though it said that our rooms are going to be um your need to help i just want to help the lady here. yeah i was thinking faiza wants to help yeah. the lady faiza wants to help ismat so ismat can you just reach out to faiza kashif she knows oh, uh, she okay. was telling she can uh, help you with the pakistani sure. passport thing okay um so you're most probably you and your husband are going to be separated so when you're traveling to muhara amaka make sure your suitcases are different so you're not trying to share it's yeah it's hassle. you don't know, you don't even know if your husband's room is going to be upstairs and yours is going to be downstairs how many times are you going to go up and down okay and also, you know, uh, try to be pack your hand carry as much compatible for the days of the mina, the main days of the hajj. Then you don't have to hassle and worry about like where's my small uh, small shampoo and this and that lotion bottle because everything is be in a small container and ziplock for passing through the custom of the Canada. Uh, because sometimes suitcases you never know didn't reach to the jadda until you will be in the grounds of mina and it would be really hard so she's talking about packing your hand carry from canada to makkah yes she's basically saying in case your suitcase gets lost your hand carry has enough, enough stuff for you okay not she's not telling you to take your hand carry to mina yeah, no. yeah, yeah. don't bother it was a waste yes for the missed bottle you can find the links in the in the youtube slide description all right, people. All right, everyone. Thank Insha you. Inshallah, so ladies. Inshallah, it will be fine. I'm super excited for you. <laughs> yeah. Make, make, please, please make dua that Allah invites us again for Umrah, for, for Hajj, for, and Hajj. for everything with the ease. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping to go to uh, Palestine, so I want to take my kids to yeah. Palestine. Inshallah, Islam, inshallah, inshallah, to Masjid Just make a dua make for a dua. us. Make Do dua not for us, forget please. like the making the dua, and I'm sure you won't forget. Whenever you will go, remember that any of this life, you will remember me and someone. Inshallah. It will be your Assalamu alaikum. For everything. And it's very emotional right now. Like you made us cry. And uh, <laughs> that's it. And uh, we pray for you. And also, I remember you in the, in the Hajj as well. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair, sister. You know what? Your husband will make you laugh. When we were on the plane, we were writing duas. On the plane, we were writing duas on our, in our book. Both of us right next to each other. And her husband picked over. He's like, "What's wrong with you guys? Why are you writing? No, why are you writing duas? Are you guys kids?" And she looked at her husband. And she's like, "What do you plan to ask for for the whole day? What are you going to be asking for?" And he's looking at us. He's like, "And I think he got a little bit worried after that." Yeah. And then he and said, then he "Can said, I, can I have your dua book?" I said, "You gonna cheat my dua?" And we all laughed together. And I said, "Let me tell you one more last thing. Last and uh, obviously the dua will never be end. The last thing was me and someone decided to write in our dua book. That was that death. We Ooh, literally yes. planned about our own death, and we asked that plan to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to happen. The uh, the leader of the Ansar once he passed away. So that leader, uh, the uh, the he was a very gigantic and like a very strong man. When he passed away, those Sahaba said to the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, that was the very lightest janaza which we carried. Then the, the Prophet Muhammad Sallam replied them back because what i see you guys didn't able to see it Seventy thousand angel came down to hold his janaza and there was a once you were washing his body there was a water from the from the heaven the zamzam and their shroud of the kafan will be ready for the jannah kafan and the angels are waiting and at the the throne of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala get shook by the by the uh, like the happiness the my this servant of my is coming that person is not a prophet but again look at that uh, i don't remember the sahaba's name yeah uh, do you remember him i don't remember the sahaba's name just right now Mas, i think Mas but he died in war and he died like quite badly it was um in he, was, he died in a battle yes and so we i forgot i forgot to add it but i'll add it in the slide make dua for your death and not not that oh, Allah, Allah take my life away. No, no, no. Make make dua for a beautiful ending in your life. Ya Allah, give me a beautiful, peaceful death. Ya Allah, give me a death where the angels feel angels come for my janaza. Allah, give me a death where my kafan is made in heaven. Ya Allah, give me a death where my where my uh, janaza feels light. And Ya Allah, give me a death in the state of Ibadah when Ibadah, you are pleased Ibadah. with me. Ya Allah, give me a death like in the in the city of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. 
and the shahada and that was a beautiful dua for umar radhiyallahu ta'ala and it's, it seems any can can think can be happy it happened. seems chaotic but make the dua for your life to end beautifully, beautifully. and when allah is pleased with you and ask make that dua i'll make, add it yeah yeah, yeah make it. sure add like that last point in your the dua of your death once you are in the time of your death come you are eager to meet your lord more than like allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants like your time is and you are so happy to meet your lord yeah. allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so make a beautiful dua for your dad even though for your kids for your offspring like everyone's that inshallah amen amen jazakumullah khair everyone thank you so much for joining us 